on there right now. Thank you, everyone. Hope we're all uh, refreshed and uh, ready to go. Round two. And uh, we'll just continue now. We're on to item six, public hearings and delegations. Member of, members of committee, I'll now call on Stephanie Roy McCallum, Managing Director of Dialogue Partners, to approach the podium. This was a request uh, under um, public hearings uh, agenda provides for further discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, no, there's a further item later under private and confidential that we'll be dealing with this. Good afternoon, Stephanie, welcome. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of council. I want to express first my appreciation for you letting me come to speak today. It's been a very long seven days on the Our Voice, Our Hamilton project. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. I'd like to do just a couple of things in my few minutes of presentation is to first um, uh, advocate for the process and offer what we were trying to achieve with the conversation. I'd like very much to acknowledge and apologize for our missteps and our mistakes along the way. 
and I'd like to offer additional views and alternate thoughts so that you can give full consideration to the issue. So first, I will say you have the heartfelt and, um, and full of much soul-searching apology of the entire Dialogue Partners team for our missteps this, this week. We should not have asked what is HSR, which was the very first misstep. And we, we want to acknowledge the reaction that that generated and the perception of whether we understand even the, the essence of the people in this community or the intent of the conversation. We certainly want to acknowledge the other missteps on the process, um, allowing participants to post comments to the community priorities tool without um, at checking them first so that there wasn't foul language or inappropriate statements um, posted. We want to acknowledge that there is a meeting on the potential of casino scheduled this week and we had had an event also scheduled at the same time. So we very much want to apologize for those missteps and those mistakes. I want to say that when we apologized initially on Twitter on Monday night and then, and then acknowledged the misstep on Tuesday and, and started to answer some of the questions that had been raised, some of the very important and valid questions that had been raised on Tuesday morning, we then went silent and we stopped talking and we stopped acknowledging. Our first decision together with our partner, the City of Hamilton, was that we would just listen and understand what was being said so we could get a handle on how best to step into the conversation. And then the silence went on for many days and that was the wrong choice. We stand for stepping into hardcore conversations. Our preference would have been that it was a hard conversation about city services and the funding that goes with them. We believe that those are conversations cities across Canada should be having. But if the conversation to be had first was about our credibility, about the fact that we aren't from Hamilton, about how much are we being paid, those are questions we have gotten on every project we have ever worked on. And they are important questions to be answered. Usually us being from away is an indication that there isn't a bias to the conversation. We don't have a stake in the outcome of a discussion on city services and the willingness to pay for them, like staff might have if they hosted the conversation, or like someone from Hamilton might have, certainly someone who might have a stated view. We want to offer to you for consideration too that there have been some very loud voices this week that have been covered by the media, in, in part because of our silence, because there wasn't another view to cover. We want to offer our respect and acknowledgement of those loud voices that have raised really important questions to be answered. We do want to advocate though for an environment of respect in this conversation and in any conversation that happens in the city of Hamilton because some, not all, some of those loud voices drowned out people who had a different view. It's why we shut down our Facebook page because people who wanted to talk about city services or who offered a view different than those who were speaking loudly, loudly were bullied and humiliated and so we shut the conversation down because our job is good process is respect and a respect for the diversity of opinion, the ability to have conversations where we don't all agree and to do them respectfully. So we'd like to offer that back into the conversation. We have heard from many residents of Hamilton who haven't been covered in the media that they would like to have this conversation, that they have really important views on city services, that in fact hundreds of them have responded to the survey questions that were available in just three days of consultation. So there's a passion and an interest to talk about the substantive issues in this community and they're important ones for you to hear. We have also received, and we don't think they're warranted, but we appreciate them, an outcry of apology to us for how we have been treated in initiating the conversation. And I don't think that uh, that apology is necessary, but I appreciate that there are those in the community who would like to have a respectful conversation on a diversity of views in this situation. And I guess perhaps the 
the last thing I'd offer, well, two last things I'd offer, is that um, through the course of the last seven days, it's been suggested that we are a stranger to competence. And um, I know that that's been repeated many times. I would say we are not. Now, I understand that the last seven days certainly doesn't suggest that. But we have a track record of conversations where we put our name on them, of conflict, of issues of colonialism, of health care, of nuclear waste, of school closures, where they are hard conversations, and we honor and respect all the voices. So we do have a track record of these conversations. And I'll just end perhaps by saying that whatever happens and whatever it is you do decide, we are humbled by the voices we've heard the last seven days. So thank you. Stephanie, I appreciate that. I'm sure it's uh, quite an emotional uh, situation to have to address at this time. I'm going to go to a speaker's list that I have included myself on. So I have Councillor Whitehead, Councillor Marula, Councillor Clark, Councillor Duval, and myself so far, and Councillor. These are questions to the presenter, please. Councillor Jackson and Councillor Farr now, okay? Thank you, and thank you, Stephanie, for coming forward. And I did respond to the email that I received, and uh, thank you for uh, providing some clarity to the issues and certainly standing up to the plate and taking culpability where misste uh, missteps were taken. Um, you didn't talk uh, about a couple of other issues that seem to be very topical over this period of time, but you do mention it in your email. Uh, one of them was, the, uh, well, you didn't talk about uh, the fact that it was compromised, uh, the technology was compromised, one. And two, uh, can I ha have a clearer understanding of two other issues that you didn't touch on? And one was the, uh, the tool that you used, uh, I can't remember the name, a monkey or something. Survey monkey. Survey monkey. Mm -hmm. And then if, if FIPA or, 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 or what the, uh, the standing is, uh, I need clarity on that. And two, um, the picture por uh, piece. Uh, obviously, was, that was another very topical issue uh, in the context of the pic pictures were posted. And can you provide some clarity on that issue as well? Yes, absolutely. So I've written them down um, so I can answer them. The first is that um, in the uh, late hours of Monday night, early hours of Tuesday morning, there was a security breach on the website and a virus on the Our Voice, Our Hamilton website, and a virus was inserted. It was identified immediately by a, by a resident of Hamilton, and we appreciate that. Our security logs would have picked it up, but sometimes they it takes an hour or two for, we, for us to hear about it. So we, um, when we, we had a conversation with the city of Hamilton, we took immediate action to remove the virus and at the same time the um, group that had created the website for us was building a replica site with and I'm so not tech technical so I'm going to tell you what they said and maybe if you're technical it will make sense to you um, they were building a replica site with clean code, checking the code from every page and every item of content that was posted on the site, which we were to launch, but instead we turned the website itself off on Wednesday night. So that's the answer to the first question. The second question, SurveyMonkey, we have posted a detailed answer to that and provided that to you as well. SurveyMonkey is a commonly used tool in governments at all levels in Canada. It does meet the requirements of AMFIPA. The question relates to the Patriot Act because the servers are based in the U.S. We post in our question a response from the Privacy Commissioner of Ontario and her opinion on the use of SurveyMonkey and, it, and that it is safe and acceptable for use. In addition, we did respond to an individual who had a comment about whether we could personally identify his responses and submissions to the survey itself. We can't actually do that unless he provides his email address. Otherwise, there's just a number assigned. He would have to tell us, you know, what time he made the submission, what the answers to his questions were. We can't go in and identify who answered the questions. 
So uh, protecting privacy that way. And the question's on Pinterest. That's the name of the online tool. We originally created the Pinterest board, which is like an online scrapbooking tool where people post images, not necessarily just pictures, um, of things that matter to them. In this case, we were intending to use the tool to answer the question, you know, what services make a difference in your life? What services could be improved? What services could be changed? We created those boards in August. August. The project was originally designed to be launched in September and it was delayed in order to accommodate a conversation on all city services because the original scope of the project was infrastructure. So the, we never turned off the board in, in August, but it was not promoted. It was owned by an individual on our team under the name of Our Voice, Our Hamilton. We launched the project on January 7th. We have asked Pinterest countless questions because when you look at the board and you see the screenshots of the board, because we took the pictures down after the, there was some controversy related to them to start fresh. When you look at the board, you see some pictures that are identified that say posted by user. That's us, guaranteed. But other pictures identify the website they came from, not who posted them. And we would like to go onto the Pinterest board and actually experiment so we could see what's happening but due to the public nature and the controversy this week we haven't done that. We've also asked Pinterest to go on the back end and tell us who posted them because if we posted them we will take responsibility for it but we don't know. We can only identify the ones that say posted by user. Thank you. So that the two questions on the picture, the picture was, uh, there was a picture of uh, Hamilton, I think Ohio's City Hall and uh, something in a t-shirt with uh, Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, is that suggesting then that the, it was a user that, uh, that posted those? I, I want to be clear in my answer to that question. We don't know the answer to that. Thank you. Uh, and, and the other one I should have mentioned is also uh, uh, the utilization of uh, WordPress. Can you ask, uh, can you provide some clarity in why that particular format was chosen, uh, what the advantages are, and, and how you ultimately arrived at that decision. Yes, absolutely. And so all the technical answer to that is in my, is in some of the documents I shared, but my short answer to that is that this project, our Vorsar Hamilton, was intended to leave behind some legacy items for the city, including, you know, websites, um, databases, a uh, Twitter, um, a Twitter account, a Facebook page, and so we chose a very easy to use, user friendly um, website that was cost effective and easily transferred to the city. And it, uh, it was. Take in consideration the uh, the uh, security uh, component of WordPress in regards to the fact that it could be um, hacked more readily than maybe other formats? Well, um, so I'll step back from that question because I'm not an expert on security and security breaches of websites, but I will say we subcontracted to a highly reputable firm who has a, also has um, a quite a credible reputation for this and they have used, um, and they've built websites for us for many projects and we've never had this challenge. Thank you. Uh, now on the, um, you responded to an, a, a, a RFP when you were awarded the contract. Um, help me understand, for example, you indicated that the comments were being vetted first before they were being posted. They were just being posted. That was one of the perhaps missteps. Was a requirement in any way identified within uh, the, the RFP process that you required to vet them first? Or what was the process that was, uh, I guess, um, thought through? So, um, I guess I want to say I, I'd have to go back to the actual RFP and read it in detail to be able to answer that question and I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, we proposed an approach in our response to the request for a proposal and offered some potential tools and ways the project could be addressed. But I, I would need to, um, I would like to give you a full answer to the question. And I'm just trying to understand um, uh, what were the, the, the and I, this is a question I'll be asking staff, but obviously it's, it's helpful to ask you as well. Yeah. What, what was the, 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 the full expectations and conditions and criteria that were asked of in the context of the request proposal? And in any of those, 
uh, uh, criteria, was these missteps not consistent with what you should have been doing relative to the uh, RFP? Can I come back to you with an answer for that? Well, and I will be asking staff that as well. Okay. Did you have a, a project manager with the city uh, that you work with on a regular basis? Um, through you, Madam Chair. Yes, we have worked intensively with the project team. Our, we've met um, countless times with the project team and um, provided you know, over 300 progress updates and reports over the last nine months. And we have worked closely in partnership with the city on this project. Um, both of our names are on it. So together, we have gotten to the point of, of last Monday of launching the project. So here's where I'm coming in. Then there's the advisory, probably the RP team, then there's this probably steering committee uh, team, and more than likely there's a project management team that's a, a deal sort of the day-to-day -day, uh, interactions with, with, your, with your company. So uh, was there a day-to-day -day, uh, interaction with that project management team or person? Um. Through you, Madam Chair. I mean, my answer is yes. I'm just not sure which time frame. Are you looking for the last week? Or are you looking for overall the project? Overall. All, all over, uh, on this particular launch of January's uh, piece, uh, that's a, a component of your overall, uh, uh, I guess, responsibilities that were identified through the request for proposals. I'm trying to understand uh, what the relationship is between uh, you as a consultant, the work that you're doing, and the uh, performance management of what you're doing or the, 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 uh, through a project management team or project manager individual, I'm trying to understand uh, that, that, that um, performance, that, that person, the contact, the regulator, regularly, uh, and what was the scope of the responsibility between that relationship? Okay, so through you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, there is a project charter that outlines roles and responsibilities for the project and who who does what from a staff perspective. We have worked very closely together with the project team on an ongoing, pretty much, you know, if not daily, but certainly weekly basis um, over the last few months, but on a very regular basis over the last nine months. Um, uh, in my view, we have had a, a strong and good relationship with the City of Hamilton in, create, in getting to the point of launching this project, and their staff are, in my view, eminently capable. And if you're also asking me the question, did they approve everything, um, my answer is yes. Um, to, to the point of project launch, my answer is yes. Okay, and I appreciate that. The um... The last question, Madam uh, Chair, that I, I have is uh, acknowledge the misstep and, and, and it should be vetting uh, the comments before actually posting them. I appreciate that. I mean, it's something I come across as well on my own website, and now that's what I do. It's a lesson learned. Um, but the other piece is um, there might be, uh, and I think there was some concerns about the delay, the amount of time that something was posted versus actually taking it off the, the, uh, the site. So can I understand what that process is and what happened is, uh, uh, that resulted in what seemed to be a, a fairly, well, not satisfactory uh, delay in, on, on offensive uh, material that was posted that, in fact, was not taken down in a, in a timely fashion? I'm sorry, through you, Madam Chair. I would need a specific so I could answer that question, and I'd be happy to answer it, but I might need a specific example so I could so do so What is the you. process when uh, knowing uh, that, the, that, and you acknowledge that vetting is, is the way to go moving on a go forward basis, yeah. but in, in, the, in the presence of what transpired uh, since the January launch, the question I'm asking specifically was clear in some of the emails I received. There was concerns about uh, uh, offensive or, or material that was posted that didn't get taken down in a timely fashion. Okay. I was trying to understand what that process was for you, and what and, and what was the what is your performance measure in regards to taking that material and taking it off? All right. So um, so through you, Madam Chair. Um, there were some comments being posted into the Community Priorities Online tool. Because they didn't require approval before being made public, um, 
they were they were present. I have it from my team because I too have asked these questions that they were immediately removed. That's the answer I was given multiple times because they were reposted those some of those comments over and over and over again. At which point, it, this all happened in a space of, a, of about an hour and a half, at which point we shut down community priorities. So if that answers the question. It does, it does. I appreciate that. I guess it just drives another, one last question. I thought the last one was it, but did there be a, was there a sense at some point that there was almost a campaign uh, to embarrass uh, the company relative to the fact that a lot of these things were getting reposted? after being taken down? Um, through you, Madam I Chair. It's probably a rhetorical question. I don't want to yeah. put you in the spot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marula. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. And I, I really want to thank Stephanie for being here today. I think it shows a great deal of uh, professionalism as well as bravery, and, and for that I commend you. Um, having said that, in, in looking at um, what has transpired, there, there are a number of questions uh, that do exist in the community. And primarily, I think what it comes down to is, from, from your perspective, can you elaborate on what the purpose of this exercise is and the objective uh, at this point or prior to this occurring? Through you, Madam Chair, to the Councillor, the goal of the Our Voice, Our Hamilton public engagement process was to raise understanding and awareness about city services, to have a rich and full and meaningful conversation with citizens about a complex issue so that they could really offer their views, their values, their needs, their ideas to the conversation and that they could also offer input on the willingness to pay for those services and, and what changes needed to be made. The, go the goal of the project also included reaching a diversity of views and ensuring an inclusive and respectful process. There was also a goal of building capacity in the organization itself, but also in the community to have conversations um, that were complex and perhaps contained a variety and diversity of views. Okay, and just for those uh, listening, because I think there's a, a lack of understanding of when this project started and when it was um, scheduled to end and what the total cost was. So through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, could you just elaborate on that, on that fact? Yes, so th through you, Madam Chair. Um, this project was initiated, I think we had our project initiation meeting last April. Um, so the RFP went out in January. I'll let staff give you the exact dates. Um, it was initiated in April, and from that point in time, we've had a number of iterations of the project. We were originally planned to engage in a conversation about infrastructure and level of service and trade-offs related to funding and level of service last spring and report on it after that. That was then delayed so we had adequate time to engage and at some point over the summer with the level of, or the service delivery review there was a conversation that this would be a good opportunity to have a conversation about city services overall and then have the conversation about infrastructure. And so the scope changed and we adjusted course. We originally planned to engage the public starting in September and additional time was taken to ensure that we were in alignment with what was happening with service delivery review. And so launch was scheduled for January 7th. We, so we've been working on this project for nine months in essence. We, are, uh, we have a contract and we responded to the RFP in the amount of 402,000. At project initiation, we agreed together with the city we would do our very best to achieve cost savings wherever they were possible and what we had um, proposed and were contracted for. And we took the price to 376000 And we are due, well, we, we have a contract um, that would end after we report on the engagement process. So this engagement process of our Voice Our Hamilton, which was launched on January 7th, was due to continue through to April, and then we would report out to committee and council in May. 
Okay. And with respect to the uh, procurement process and the fact that you're not a local firm, I think uh, many of us uh, around here understand the importance of ensuring that we don't have protectionist type of policies, particularly for local businesses. Uh, but from the, from the public's perspective, I think uh, a lot of them uh, were under the impression that perhaps we should have been more inclusive of our local talent. Uh, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, to Stephanie, can you just elaborate on your experiences throughout throughout the country and how that plays a role in, in, in that process when, when you are bidding for jobs? Yes, um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, we often, well, I would say the majority of our work is in cities we don't live in, or certainly cities I don't live in. We work in Australia, the US, Canada, and Europe, and we regularly aren't from that community. It, it's a reason why we put our name on our projects, because we don't have a stake in the outcome of the conversation. Whatever gets decided here about city services is not a thing we have a, a, a personal opinion or view on. We bid on projects that are publicly posted from around the world that are about the kind of work that we do. We know that there are credible and capable firms in Hamilton. Many of them have spoken out in the last week. I would also say that many of them have on the record opinions about city services and city decision making and, and city approaches to consultation. And I think that, in my view, from a, a meaningful engagement process, that would preclude the involvement of some of your citizens because they might have an alternate view and might not want to engage with um, those firms. Did you, I'm sorry, there was a second part to your question. Oh, and, and that's fine, just with respect to the protectionist policy and how that could be counterproductive to municipalities, oh, yes. particularly surrounding our own local businesses who yes. are bidding outside of the city. Okay, I, I just, I'll answer just a little bit more on that if that's all right, Madam Chair. Um, we know that there are firms in Hamilton who do really good engagement work and so and we have respect for them. One of the ways we had planned in this project, in fact we reached out to many of these organizations in December to address the issue of being from Hamilton was to partner with community organizations and community groups so that it wasn't necessarily us always hosting the conversation, it was them hosting the conversation with their members and their networks and their contacts because that's about building community. And so in, we've identified hundreds of those groups. We made 228 phone calls to them in December. We've heard from many of them in the last week saying, are we having this conversation? Can we get the materials? Can we sit down and start to talk about it? So that was our approach to ensure that this was a Hamilton conversation. And, and, that's, and that's very, very vital in, in what did transpire. In, in looking at... Um, uh, the voices that you, you're, you're mentioning, the loud voices. I, I presume you're referring to uh, Twitter, Facebook, those voices. Have you, to you, uh, Deputy Mayor, with respect to engaging in more traditional voices, what outreach have you con have you conducted, if any, or and received any input along those lines? Have you done that to date? If so, how valuable was that? Through you, Madam Chair. Well, we're seven days into the project, and after three days, we shut down the website. So opportunity to engage online became limited. I would say that we have heard from hundreds of individuals in the survey, and I'd be happy to provide you a fuller answer on, on um, some demographic information like postal codes and whether they're from an organization. I'd be happy to answer that question um, with some time to get an answer from my team. We... Um, Large portions of our project are designed to engage beyond Twitter and Facebook. And to be really honest, um, Twitter and Facebook is not a tool for a full and meaningful conversation on a complex issue. It is a, an important tool to ensure that there's awareness of an issue and to promote um, participation, but you can't have a conversation about city services in 140 characters. So we, many of our tools and approaches are designed to have a meaningful conversation with people face-to-face -face or on their own or with an organization that they trust and believe in. Okay, and just on that, on that point, so, so basically the loud voices that you were referring to were those individuals on Twitter and Facebook, but how can, I, how can we reconcile the fact that subsequent 
to the facts of this um, of this issue, that those voices I, I was subjected to at grocery stores, my barber shop, at the gym, just basically in my neighborhood. Um, I think those voices are a little louder than than just from this social media. So through you, Madam Chair, how can you reconcile that component? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Um, the media coverage most certainly has impacted many Hamiltonians, and those who are not on Twitter and Facebook are certainly aware of the project and likely have a view or, or an opinion on it to date in the last seven days. I absolutely acknowledge that. I can only speak for the people we have heard from, so the Twitter and Facebook users, absolutely, but we have received many phone calls and emails from people um, offering alternate views and saying, we'd like to have this conversation. I can imagine that your offices, each of you, has also heard from many people. Right, and hence my position. Um, so through you, uh, Deputy uh, Mayor, with respect to the security breach, I think it's important to recognize uh, the, the alleged security breach is an important one because in, in, in the skills needed to, to provide the services that you're providing, the necessary um, team would be should be in place in order to prevent that type of security breach. So through you, Deputy Mayor, how do you reconcile that with, with respect to the, the skills associated with the contract at hand? Yes, through you, Madam Chair. I'm not. I'm sorry if you were saying something to me. I'm okay. Um, we subcontracted a reputable web design and mobile app design firm to build the website for us, and they have all of those skills and knowledge. Okay, so it, was, it wasn't directly, but indirectly, your your responsibility. Yes. Okay, and how can we reconcile through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, with respect to the online face-to-face -face component, it reads in your own document uh, that you submitted, the engagement process needs to reflect the realities of the, of the world today. And that means both online components and interaction as well as face-to-face -face events, opportunities need to be utilized. Critical to the success of engagement on a complex issue like this one will be the ability to reach beyond usual participants at the usual kinds of meetings, inviting in, in the usual ways to achieve something different, lasting, sustainable. You're, you're referencing technology in this, in this point, uh, innovative online technologies and, and appropriate tools. So based on your own wording, clearly through you, Deputy Mayor, and looking at where this fell off the rails, was really, in your own words, a critical component of this contract. So how can you reconcile the fact that with your own words, you recognize you're not a stranger of incompetence, but your behavior or your, your last week reflects differently. How can you um, reconcile that, that, I guess, conflict? So through you, Madam Chair, I think I need some clarity on what the question is. I'm sorry. Very, very clearly, you say that it's critical to be able to communicate with participants outside of the usual groups, that meaning the technology, meaning Twitter, but Facebook. The critical failure occurred in that critical need of communicating within social media. So in essence, how do you reconcile the fact that you're claiming that that is really a critical component of, your, of the contract, but you have failed on that critical component. So how do you reconcile the fact that we shouldn't terminate your contract? Through you, Madam Chair, I think there's a number of questions in there, so I'll try and offer a full answer to them. Um, so my first answer is that section, I think you're reading from our proposal, um, that section of our proposal speaks to innovative online tools. Um, Twitter and Facebook are not a medium for a complex, meaningful conversation. They're certainly an important part of communication and outreach. I would reference the community priorities, the cityscape online, and the, um, the survey, for example, as the opportunity to engage online. That section of our proposal also references the need to reach beyond the usual suspects, not only through technology, and that would include things like working with community organizations, the cityscape kits that were designed to be distributed to community organizations, the opportunity to train community organizations to have their own conversations. So I, I think I think that's the answer to to your question of how did we plan to achieve this. The, the thing I would add to that is that we launched the project on Monday. 
On Wednesday, we were directed to shut down the website. And in the course of those few days, we were silent in response to many of the allegations and concerns and, and rumors that circulated. That didn't allow us to address some of those issues. So I guess uh, in essence, and then in conclusion from my perspective at this point, um, out of all of the methods of outreach, you've mentioned uh, social media, you've mentioned the survey, all of these, uh, everything you've mentioned except the face-to-face -face component, there's been some serious flaws in through you, Deputy Mayor, to Stephanie. What, what part of those actually were successful? Because based on my understanding, everything was taken down uh, with respect to that component. So could you elaborate on that? Um, please forgive me, Madam Chair. I, I, again, am not certain what the question is that you're asking me. But the Are question you... is simple, that you're only supposed to engage the community in social media based on your own documents, uh, and, and you consider that to be critical. The, the communication broke down, they changed the channel, and then the, the focus was on the fact that uh, you weren't meeting the grade. So in essence, we've lost touch. So we've gone through this entire process of understanding and supporting the, pro the purpose, the objective, the procurement process. Everything was intact, the integrity was intact, but everything fell off the rails when, when, when basically everything you were supposed to do failed at that time at the initial, at the initial step. So we're at a point now of trust being the issue and actually sabotaging the entire project based on that falling off the rails. So through you, Deputy Mayor, can I make that any clearer? So how do you reconcile that? Um, I, I don't think I have an answer for that. Okay, and that's fair. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So so lastly, through you, um, uh, Deputy Mayor, I think clearly, and I, I truly appreciate you being here today, but clearly I think uh, trust plays a huge role in this dialogue and engagement in the community. Frankly, I think the vast majority of the people you feel to be critical in this engagement no longer want to listen or be involved with your process, and we need to take this process back. So at the appropriate time, I'll deal with that after speaking to staff. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clark. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, can I ask uh, whether or not, and it's um, Stephanie? Yes. Stephanie received documentation from our city staff, for example, a list of acronyms for all of our different committees and processes that we undertake. Through you, Madam Chair, I would have to go back through all through back to the beginning for from to all of the research of our team. It's been nine months, so before answering that affirmatively, I would I would need to to and look get into clarification it. from staff, Madam Deputy Mayor, through Mr. Murray. Did we provide a an annotation of all of the acronyms that we utilize in the city? So, if I can, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, if I'm the uh, the project management of this particular file in terms of the day-to-day -day was uh, uh, mostly from uh, public work so for that reason Jerry will answer that question so through the chair a um, whether it was provided or not I'm not sure I can get the answer um, uh, email back we had one of our key uh, personnel who were on this file uh, return this morning from a vacation so um, I, I can find out if it was provided or not. Again, we've had numerous meetings um, and acronyms have been used throughout that. Um, I, I would think we have used them. However, uh, a definitive um, you know, uh, list of what they are, I can, I can get that answer. I'll email back to the office right away. Madam Deputy Mayor, we, we use acronyms all the time. I mean, today it's the GIC reviewing SMTs, SOT, developed on the QT might parallel the SOP and the RFP and the RFQ at HCA, HSR, CCH, HECFI, EMT, BOH, PW, and likely extend to the MUSH sector. And that's just the short one. So the question is valid if the folks weren't provided a dictionary of acronyms, then how would they understand exactly what acronyms they're supposed to be responding to? And if you don't know what someone's responding to, then why wouldn't you ask the question, what exactly is that? So I would expect that 
we would be able to clarify relatively quickly whether or not this company was actually received a dictionary of acronyms. So I don't know how fast we can get that, but that's uh, rather important to me. Um, can you clarify just the, the timelines? Um, I'm going to use colloquialisms. The fur hit the fan on such and such day. HSR was seemed to be the sticking point. What day was that? And what transpired after that? Through you, Madam Chair, um, I'll do my best to, to answer that. We have documented <clears throat> that for you, and I'm sure that staff have as well. We launched the project on the morning of January 7th. That's Monday. There, it was. We were promoting it in, in a variety of ways. Some at some point on the evening of January 7th, and I, I'd guess it's post dinner time. Um, we were asking questions on Twitter to promote the conversation and the participation participation in the scheduled workshop for January 12th about city services. At some point during that evening, um, we had an individual respond to that question on Twitter, and his response um, came over multiple tweets. So our team, and I'll step back for a second on the clarification of it, the HSR question, when we facilitate a conversation in a room of people, we never accept or make assumptions about acronyms or what someone says because then we interpret it one way and someone else interprets it another way. So my team made the choice that we would follow that practice online that we would do in a room and not make an assumption. It is not that we did not know what HSR was. It is that we were trying to be certain that his last comment was in was about HSR and what he meant by HSR and related to the multiple tweets before then. But I have been clear and acknowledged it was not the best question to ask, certainly because of the response it generated. And then, there, shortly after that, within an hour or two, I apologized. I took over the Twitter feed, and I apologized on Twitter and said, look, not a good question, but hey, can we, can we talk about this? At which point in there, the Tell OH, Tell R Hamilton Everything campaign was launched, and that went on through the night. And that was the media coverage that happened over a number of days. On the Tuesday morning early, we posted our apology and acknowledgement of the what is HSR question and started to answer some of the substantive questions that had been asked, like who are we and how much are we being paid and um, where are we from and all of those kinds of questions. We posted those answers on Facebook and the response and the concern continued. At some point on Tuesday, the Tell OH Everything campaign moved from this passion and pride in Hamilton, and we're going to tell you everything we know about Hamilton, to a tone by some people, not all, by some people, that the goal was to um, attack the credibility of dialogue partners versus engage in a conversation on city services. On um, Wednesday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, in there, I'm really sorry, it's, it is written up on our on the website. We um, a security breach was identified, and there were challenges with community priorities. On Wednesday night, we made the website blank and shut down community priorities. And the ability to engage with the online tools also from from the apps, just so to put additional security questions on them. And from that point on, we were silent together with the city of Hamilton. And can I ask? So can I ask who made the decision? You made the decision to shut down the site? <coughs> I can't see who made the decision in the document that I have here. Through you, Madam Chair. We were requested to shut down the site by the city of Hamilton. So the city asked you to shut down the site? Yes. Had they not asked you to shut down the site, what would you have done? On Through you, Madam Chair. On Wednesday night, I had a conversation with our partner, and so I, I'd like to be clear that together we were making decisions on this project as we had worked all the way through. That the best approach, in my view and my team's view, was that we step into the conversation and we step into it 150% and we um, 
talk about the things that weren't being heard, like the answers to the questions about city services, like the people who did want to be to participate, that we initiate rules of engagement to introduce an environment of respectful conversation back into the conversation, that we really, in essence, go back to having an in-depth conversation in a very proactive way. And we offered that for consideration to the city. And and we respect the fact that the city was hesitant to implement that, knowing that a motion had been moved or suggested to be moved that the issue would come here for consideration. And the decision to run silent, run deep, was that a city decision or an agreed upon decision? Through you, Madam Chair. The city certainly can't tell us not to talk to the media. We respected our partner's decision not to respond to the media for a number of days um, in order that committee and council had the ability to have the consideration that it was your decision to make. The, on Friday, our team came to the conclusion that for us, for Dialogue Partners, that was the wrong choice. And so that's why we stepped into the media conversation on Sunday. But we did respect the city's decision and hesitancy and their suggestion, not their request, their suggestion to be silent. So we've had a copy, it was sent by email to us, it was an open letter to citizens that was from yourself and then there was an open letter to council which for all intents and purposes was pretty much the same substance as the the first letter with some minor changes um setting the record straight was emailed to us and the blog for posting on january 13th was emailed to us so on wednesday night then silence across the board from everybody these came out after the fact while the pot was still being stirred, if you will. Is that correct? Through you, Madam Chair. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, I've got some questions about the contract. Can I ask them now? Um, I'm just wondering, Councillor, that we don't wait till we get to that portion of this in private and confidential section. I will if look you to wish, your... But I also... It's not, they're not confidential questions, however, and it's a public document, so... Uh, well, let's wait till this part of this presentation delegation questions to the delegate are completed. But I did have, Mr. Murray did have a comment to make with to regards clear, to the previous... To be clear, this is the delegate's document. Yes, understood. I understand, Councillor. Council, um, Mr. Murray had a comment to make to one of the questions you've raised also. Mr. Murray, can I just ask you to clarify also? Yes, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Just in reference to your question about who specifically uh, directed the shutting down of the uh, of the site, uh, I made that uh, decision uh, in uh, consultation, certainly with uh, staff that were working uh, over the last week on this uh, matter as a, as it was unfolding. Um, I had some concerns, very serious concerns, about what was transpiring uh, on the site in terms of. Uh, uh, breaches of the security of the site and the content that was finding its way onto the site and uh, uh, but at the end of the day it was important I think for us to uh, uh, not allow this thing to uh, perpetuate um, in the direction or continue in the direction I was going so just so as you're clear it was me so there was no when it went silent and deep there was no consideration by SMT or yourself to um, try to explain publicly exactly what's going on? Um, to you, uh, Deputy Mayor, certainly over the last seven days, I think virtually every day, staff have been quoted in the local media as to um, uh, what was unfolding and uh, what our concerns were. Uh, there's a point in time, though, certainly, that I do want to uh, have a chance to answer your questions, and that's why I'm here today, and we're if, uh, if it's possible at some point, we do have a presentation that we're happy to make in public that, ex you know, that does uh, speak to the, uh, the history of the project and the process that was unfolded. Um, so we, we have a, a duty and an obligation to you to answer your questions, and that's why we're here today. And I think, um, just quickly, a duty and obligation to all of the constituents in the city who are asking similar questions, and we're at the moment getting one side of the story. And there's a much deeper story here um, that I've read through the documents that I have so far. 
Thank you, Councillor. And we do have the presentation background and presentation that staff will be providing next. So my comment was that we direct questions right now to the delegate here. So are you okay with going forward? Um, it, it's, uh, I, I'm up, it's up to you. I have questions about the contract specifically. If you want to finish up with the Please. documents that they provided in terms of the staff and the, the emails that we received from Stephanie, then that's fine. And then I can ask questions again. Whoever wants to try and answer the question from this document can take a shot at it. Thank you. Just I'd like to continue on with the speaker's list for, for the delegate. Thank you. Um, I now have Councillor Duval. Thanks, Madam Chair. And Thank you, Stephanie. I uh, really appreciate you coming today, and uh, I know you're in the hot seat here a little bit, and I don't know if you want a chance for a drink of water or whatever, but uh, you deserve it. But thank you. Um, most of my questions have been asked, but I, have, I do have a few, and I just want to get down and be blunt about it, was um, whose responsibility or what was the understanding between uh, DR and the city of what was to go on the website? For instance, who, who had the responsibility? Um, city hired you your services? Was it based on all the information that you took from the groups and then you had the final say or did the city have the final say? What was to go on there? Through you, Madam Chair. Um, all of the tools, the questions and the content that was developed for the project was developed by us and approved and reviewed and added to and and in collaboration with the city um, uh, approved for use, for public use. So the city approved everything that went onto the website? That was provided from use? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Yes, my answer to the question is yes, but I'd just like to, to add to that. Um, I, in no way does that abdicate the fact that we drafted all of it, but we worked in partnership with the city, and yes, in answer to your question, the city did approve everything. Okay. Did the city provide you with the photo of the city hall in Hamilton, Ontario? Um, in response to your question, um, I would think not. I would think not, certainly. Um, but again, we don't know where it came from. And if it was posted by our team, I will take responsibility for that. But we are waiting a subsequent answer from Pinterest. We have answered them and asked them a number of questions. Okay, so Pinterest is a, a contracting out group? Through you, Madam Chair. No, Pinterest is an application, an online application that links up with Facebook, which is an online scrapbooking tool. So they created the, the, the site and we created a board for the project. Okay, so the city did not provide you with a, a picture of the City Hall of Hamilton. So my question is, and how did a picture of City Hall of Hamilton get onto there if it wasn't provided by the city? Yes, in, in response um, through you, Madam Chair, um, we don't know, and that is why we are asking Pinterest to investigate. We can see from the pictures posted on the page, which we've taken down because of the controversy, but we took screenshots of the page. You can see certain pictures were posted, and they say posted by user, that's us, that's us. The two pictures in question that are raising the, the controversy don't say posted by user. but. I want to be clear, that doesn't necessarily mean my team didn't somehow post them between August and January, just that we don't know who did post them because the board has been active since from between August and January. So we have asked Pinterest to look into it. And we have not wanted to play with the Pinterest site because it remains public in order to determine the answer ourselves. Yes, I'm trying to find out, and I asked you at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, who authorized, who has the final say and who has the responsibility what goes on the website and who actually puts it on? So I thought I understood you say the city uh, okays what to go on there. Is that what I heard or not? Um, through you, Madam Chair, the, the city approved everything, every tool, every item of content, everything was approved by the city. So did the city approve those two pictures? Through you, Madam Chair. We don't know because we don't know if they were added after January 7th, after the start of the launch. I, 
I, I, I, sorry, Madam Chair, I'm just having trouble understanding. We don't know. We, we pay for a service. Um, it was like, you know, I'm using this hypothetical. If I was to hire you to do a wedding and I found out that my wife's name was spelt wrong um, or you had a picture of a, another woman, I, I mean, I wouldn't like that. No. <laughs> and I would hope that you would have an answer for me of yes. why that happened. Yes, yes. Through, to, you know, yes. it's a service that we pay for. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. Um, Yes, and my frustration is as um, great as yours in attempting to get to the bottom of it and get an answer for you. I do not like to have the answer of, I don't know. So as soon as I have an answer, I will have it for you. Okay, and there was a, um, a statement that was brought out afterwards. I guess it, it, it really became uh, inflared when... Um, is talk to people in the brackets Aboriginal newcomer and low income as an examples who probably aren't showing up in a large number of events. But did that come from the city or did that come from your group? Through you, Madam Chair, that was one of, so the tool posts a question, and the question in this case was, how can the city improve its citizen engagement practices or something like that? In order to use the tool, we provide a number of seeds, which we have already heard um, through, for example, the interviews we did with council and with senior staff about the challenges or the, or the um, successes you've had with citizen engagement. That's where the, some of those initial comments came from. Here's things that are going well in response to what's working with citizen engagement and things that are not. That seed was written by us individuals in the interviews that we conducted told us that Aboriginal people, newcomers, so new Canadians and or people in refugee communities are not participating in city city engagement activities. And that that is an important element of the conversation that needs to be heard, that isn't being heard by the city in its activities right now. So it was posted as an answer to the question so other participants could vote on it and add to it. Okay, and then in that, I guess in that statement, was it ever mentioned between the two parties of rich people, medium income people, different cultures other than Aboriginal, was that ever mentioned? I mean, you, you, what I'm trying to come up with is that we've got three categories. There's millions of categories out there. So it looks like you're just, we're just doing that. So I'm trying to find out who wrote this and was it proofread? Okay. So through you, Madam Chair, um, someone on our team wrote that. It, it was approved by the city. In response to your question about who else was referenced, about who's not participating in city city engagement activities, I would be happy to provide you with the complete report of from the interviews that we conducted. Okay, so all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor and um, Stephanie. Thank you for appearing and for the um, sincerity and contriteness of um, your explanation and uh, comments. So I just have um, one basic question for Stephanie, Madam Deputy Mayor, through you. Um, and I've consulted with our acting uh, city solicitor. So, um, and I know we have to uh, go in camera to understand uh, the contract. So Stephanie, I just ask you in the um, most genuine way I can, beyond your sincere apology today, Madam Deputy Mayor, through to Stephanie, and without discussing any specifics at all, neither from me nor from you, would you be open-minded, would you be willing to consider any new terms and or changes to the existing contract to encourage the city to continue with the contract? Madam Deputy Mayor, through to Stephanie, and I'm just looking for a general answer, and if it's even no comment, that's fair. If it's yes, Councillor, I'll be open-minded. If it's no, Councillor, just looking for a general comment, and I consulted with our solicitor before asking this, Madam Deputy Mayor. Through to Stephanie, please. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Might I just ask you to just ask me just the end part of the question one more time so I can give you a full answer? Sure, Stephanie. So without discussing any specifics from you or me, Madam Deputy Mayor, would you be willing to consider any new 
and or changes of the terms to the existing contract which might encourage the City of Hamilton to continue with the contract. Through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, please. Through you, Madam Mayor, we are always open to that conversation. I can't tell you what my answer would be without knowing what the terms might be. That's fine. But I just asked for a general response. Yeah, we are always open to that conversation. Much appreciated. Thanks, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Stephanie. Councillor Farr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Stephanie, it's good to see you again. I was one of the councillors who was in room 222 with you many, many months ago. I think you uh, easily uh, uh, could uh, see that I was quite um, uh, compelled to uh, work with you that day. It was sort of like an open session for us. And um, I was big on the engagement and, and I wanted to, to offer whatever assistance I could at that time. There was three of you in the room um, on that day, Stephanie. How many staff on this particular project from Dialogue Partners are there? I'm, I'm sorry, through you, Madam Chair, are here or? On this, through you, Madam Chair, on this project, on the Hamilton contract, how many staff from Dialogue Partners have you working on this project? Um, through you, Madam Chair, I would say that in some way our entire team has been working on this project in different ways and different roles. Okay, through you, Madam Chair, how many are on your te entire team? I'm assuming you mean all your employees of your company? Yes, that's correct. Through you, Madam Mayor, we have nine employees and a number of um, associates we work with regularly. A few of them have been involved as well. Okay, so through you, Madam Chair, of the nine then, am I hearing you right? And I really, truly appreciate you being here because these are things that have consumed a lot of us over uh, over this uh, time, uh, given that I don't think there's anybody around this table that doesn't believe in the uh, prevailing theme here, which is getting uh, engagement uh, going in this city. Um, so none of the nine owned up to the HSR comment and none of the nine owned up to putting the picks on Pinterest yet through you. Is that what I'm hearing? Through you, Madam Chair. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, the team member who asked the what is HSR comment has absolutely owned that she asked it. She has been very clear she was aware what HSR was and offered that she was attempting to facilitate the conversation. In, in our example, we have been offered many other acronyms by participants in the course of conversation. And as a result of what happened with the HSR comment, we have not clarified those other acronyms. But actually, for the conversation to continue, we would need to, otherwise we're assuming things. Um, no one, and we've had some very hard conversations in our team, has said that they posted the picture to Pinterest. But I firmly believe that um, if they had and they remembered doing so, they would say so. The, they're, they're, it's, that account has been created for many months, so they just don't remember what they posted. Yes, you said uh, from August through to now. Yes. So through you, Madam Chair, how many pictures were posted prior to January 7th? Through you, Thousands, Madam Chair. Thousands, hundreds, 20 or so? No, through you, Madam Chair. There's just a few. There were three boards created. Yeah. So through you, Madam Chair, then basically, um, would you not confidently say that you have nine people with your company, none have owned up to putting the pick on Pinterest, or none of them recall, yet there's so few pictures, likely they didn't. Through the chair, wouldn't that seem reasonable? It was through the chair, it's reasonable, but um, I don't want to abdicate responsibility if someone on my team did in okay. fact do it. Sure. And so to the HSR comment, I just remember reading it and I, did you suggest to that staff when they asked the question and put the little smiley face afterwards that maybe the approach might have been a little bit more professional uh, than rather it seemed like, what's that? You know, and then a smiley face. Through you, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Chair, Madam Chair, do you understand where I'm coming from there? Was there any sort of conversation you have with that particular staff member that perhaps they should have been a little bit more professional had they given that they knew what HSR was? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So it, on your website blog, uh, now the computer's died, I'll get back to that in just a second. You said you had uh, 300 progress updates in the last nine months with staff, which is good. Um, um, how far are we along on the, the aspect that uh, I think is most important 
in terms of the overall engagement strategy here in this contract, and that's training our city staff. I think there's 25 or 26 that will be trained on engagement for our citizens going uh, uh, for future. We would need a uh, probably a dialogue partners in the future if we're successful to that end. Since, given that you've had your nine months into 13 months, how far along are they in the training process through you, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Through you, Madam Chair, one of the decisions made in rolling out the, the project that wherever possible we would be combining and aligning opportunities to to have our team be in Hamilton and do things together. So we um, reduce travel costs, for example, or ensure that we maximize the use of team time. So because of that, our, we are two days through a five-day certificate in public participation with 25 staff. There was an additional day scheduled for this coming Friday and the last two days scheduled for the end of January. Nearly halfway. Yeah. Five days total. Important question, I think, uh, to know going forward, and with all we have still to discuss on this issue today, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, through you. So on, you, you, I really appreciated yesterday afternoon around 2 o'clock, you sent out four different attachments with respect to this issue. Uh, one, obviously, requesting that you come and, and be a delegate here today. Uh, some answers you have. Uh, apologies that we've seen in the Hamilton Spectator. I don't know how much that cost, but you certainly... Uh, uh, we've got a full page or to speak to the community via our major uh, uh, print news source uh, today. And in it you have a series of apologies. And one of the other attachments, and we saw them in those attachments too, was your blog. And the blog says right off the top, Dialogue Partners is known for its good work and public engagement on complex and complicated issues. We specialize in, and there's three things, engagement in situations of high emotion, conflict, and controversy. For certain, you, you and your company now are engaged, specifically you are now, in what you're specializing in, I think, with the high emotion and uh, with the, the controversy. Certainly not a conflict, it, uh, there's fiasco here and that kind of thing. But then you go on to say that we at Dialogue Partners are known for uh, this and we do our best at it. We've worked on issues such as and you list them all off in this case now You've apologized on many different occasions and you would suggest to us obviously here today that you haven't necessarily Done your best through you madam chair with respect to what you've put in your blog here Through you madam chair. I'm sorry counselor. Is that a question? Uh, so you, you, you you've already admitted through the chair that you've my apologies, I'll pray see it down. Do you feel you've done your best here through the chair? As it relates to your own company now. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, the short answer is no. Um, and there's lots of, um, uh, well, I guess factors contributing to that. Our silence is one mm. of that. Um, but no, in, in response to your question, no. And particularly because the controversy was about us. And so we're used to stepping into controversy about uh, health care issues and nuclear waste and school closures and help supporting people in conversation on, on that. We're, we don't usually step into a conversation where we're the point of controversy. And so the answer is, is no. Okay, that said, I'm trying to get my head around this. Um, initially, you have this partner you're referencing who suggested no comment for a while there. And then you suggested, in retrospect, that maybe wasn't a good idea. Who is this partner through the chair? Is it a majority shareholder? Is it the CEO? Or is it an equal shareholder of the nine employees you have through you? Oh, through you, Madam Chair. No, and I apologize. I should have been specific in the reference to our partner. This project, our voice, our Hamilton, has got our name, Dialogue Partners' name on it, as well as the city of Hamilton's. And so it has been a project that has both of us. And so when I reference our partner, I'm talking about the City of Hamilton administration, our work together on this. But I heard you say through you, Madam Chair, 
that despite whatever they may have offered, it was your decision to make, make no comment in those in that window of time. One of the and one of the things is I read the National Post story like everybody else, and I thought, man, did you ever have an opportunity, given your specialty, to offer even just a soundbite in a press release, and maybe not even answer the questions of the press, to to offer your side? And here is those folks who we've charged in the city of Hamilton to engage our public and get better at communicating, who chooses not to communicate at all on a national level, and given that you're an international company. And it wasn't, I, I hopefully I'm not hearing through you, Madam Chair, that this wasn't because our staff told him to make no comment. Through you, can you be clear on that? Through you, Madam Chair, I'll be as clear as I possibly can. On Tuesday, when we posted the apology and started to answer the questions on Facebook, we agreed together with the City of Hamilton that we would sit and listen to the comments of participants so we could understand them more. On Wednesday night, when the website was closed down, we advocated to the City of Hamilton that together we step into the conversation and make comments and engage participants and step back into the conversation. We, we chose to respect the fact that uh, the senior management team would be having a conversation over the course of Thursday and they wanted the opportunity to discuss it. And we chose to not speak because they had suggested it would be best if, if until they'd had the opportunity to talk about it, we didn't step into the mix. On Thursday night, we were advised that together you would be considering the issue on Monday and the suggestion, not the request, the suggestion was that we not, you know, speak for our voice, our Hamilton, until that had happened. On Friday, our team made the decision that we were going to speak for Dialogue Partners and that's why we spoke on the weekend. But I agree with you 100%. It is not. It is a good example of um, how not to um, to handle a controversial conversation. Final question. Good answer. Thank you very much for that. Um, you said you reached out to 228 of uh, many folks who were suggested to you as contacts on this engagement piece. It is not just a social media engagement piece. You had to cancel the Sackville Senior Center uh, meeting. Uh, what with the controversy. How, um, how, how did uh, they respond? Were the majority responding to you positively? Did the remain contacts in good standing going forward? And uh, ultimately, will this mean more engagement with, uh, in the event we move forward here with community meetings and, and that uh, sort of thing with these many City of Hamilton contacts? I know I gave you uh, quite a list too, through you, Madam Chair. Yeah, um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, we'd be pleased to provide you with the entire list of who we called in December, what their response was, and who's contacted us since then. But I would say, overwhelmingly, there was a lot of anticipation and um, desire to participate in this conversation. And we have heard from some of those organizations since the project launched on January 7th, wondering when they will get the chance to be involved in the conversation. A number, a good number. Good. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephanie, again for coming in. Thank you. Councillor Partridge. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Welcome to Hamilton, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. I just have a couple of quick questions. There's been some very good questions asked around the table, and Councillor Farr had, uh, had hit on one that, again, I'm having great difficulty getting my head around, and that is because on your website it very clearly talks about your expertise in being able to um, handle difficult situations. And in fact, in your presentation, you were going to run workshops for our staff on emotion, outrage, and public participation. And I'm just gonna leave that because I think you gave a satisfactory um, explanation, but I still can't get my head around, you know, rectifying what you're, you're stating your skills are and what has actually happened. I wanna come back to the launch said earlier uh, to one of the councillors that Twitter is not the best place to have a dialogue and to have a comprehensive conversation. Why would you launch it on social media? Through you, Madam Chair. 
you use different tools in a public engagement project for different purposes. Our goal with Twitter was not to have a meaningful, fulsome conversation about city services. It was to generate interest, to promote participation, and to provide information about the upcoming opportunity to participate. So to start people thinking about city services or to get some initial ideas off the off the you know the top. We were certainly pulling down their answers to the question so it would go into data analysis, but it was not to, to have a, a conversation in all its fullness. It was to promote participation, to um, raise awareness, and to encourage the sharing of information. But to be clear, you did launch it through social media. Why wasn't why wasn't the approach, and I'm going to be clear with you here, I owned a communications company had lots of experience in doing this, okay. Why would you not make the recommendation for there to be a public presentation? It's a fabulous program, and we have been so excited about this. I can't tell you, um, and I think you're getting a sense that the community really wants to have their say. This is very important, and it's not good that it has taken this turn. It's not good at all. Why wouldn't one of your recommendations have been with staff to come in and make public presentation, either to GIC or at a community meeting, have a media press conference and have that be the launch, your secondary avenues for promotion and creating awareness, as you stated, rightly so, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, and your Facebooks. Why would you not have made that recommendation, or did you? Through you, Madam Chair, um, I'd like the opportunity to pull out the entire communications plan for, for you that goes with the project. But the launch of the project included things like uh, a newsletter to all the individuals on the contact list, to ads that would have been run shortly in the paper to promote it, through flyers posted to community facilities, and also sent to that long list of community organizations so that they could also provide that information to their members. Um, if your question is why wouldn't we hold a media conference, um, certainly that would have been um, one thing to, to do in our experience without a controversy at the start of a project, um, frequently there's not a lot to report. On the morning of January 7th, the spectator covered, hey, chance to get involved. It doesn't generate a lot of interest. We thought we would engage with the media after we had held the first workshop so we could say, here's what people are saying about city services, and there would be something substantive to offer. That provides the media with a real story. Unfortunately, we've got a different real story. And with due respect, all the things that you're mentioning, the newsletters, again, they're all secondary methods of communicating. Certainly to come in, knowing how important this project is, and now you know how engaged the people in our city are, and they're wonderfully engaged. I think it would have been prudent to have some sort of a public meeting. And I know there was one planned for Sackville for this Thursday night, but even at that, considering we're dealing with this massive casino, casino issue and had already since November been talking about excuse me, having two public meetings, and then in December, end of November, December, establishing they were going to be in January, and on the dates, that would have been a massive conflict. And again, potentially not giving exposure to this program that it deserves. So that's what I'm struggling with. And, and again, been there, done that, been through this a lot of times. I would have taken a different approach. But I think we're in a position we're in that we really didn't need to be and it could have been saved. So, those are my comments, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, I, maybe I should dovetail on the last comments. This was a partnership, this project, is that correct to the Chair? Through you, Madam Chair, yes it was. The strategy that was put before us was approved and supported by staff, is that correct? Yes. 
So whether there's a media conference or not, what was in the plan was in fact what you were implementing. Is that correct to the chair? For you, Madam Chair, yes it was. Thank you. I just want to make sure there's understanding there's two partners at this table. Secondly, um, often when we deal with con uh, contracts that are uh, not uh, performing uh, at peak, <clears throat> there's a performance bond or there's a, a penalty or there's something that takes place. You've acknowledged at least there's three missteps. You acknowledge that. And I think dovetailing on Councillor Jackson's comment, there's a lot of good stuff that's already taken place uh, in this process. And I've, I've received a number of emails from people that ha just want to get on with the discussion and the dialogue, and it's unfortunate that it's not taking place as we speak. The question clearly becomes to me, would uh, uh, your company be prepared to take uh, some form of financial penalty yeah, it's a good question. Uh, well, my point is uh, some sanction, some sanction uh, in the context of those missteps, so we can continue on with in, in a good partnership to provide a, gr a good product for this community. Do you think that would be a reasonable step for consideration? How's that? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. I guess I would say I'd like the opportunity to um, consider the contract and our relationship with the City of Hamilton before I would answer that. I appreciate that. The other uh, um, thing I need to, 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 to uh, as a result of some of the questions were asked, do you think that there has been irreparable harm done at this point, at this juncture, that you could not continue uh, moving forward on this great project? Through you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to just offer some comments before I answer that question. Some of the biggest lessons of my career have come from having conversations with people who actually you would think would not be in a position to forgive others for the misdeeds they have done. Issues of human rights, of colonialism, of truth and reconciliation. And so actually I would suggest that there is no conversation you can't have because um, people believe in the ability to build a better city. And if you give them the opportunity to do that, I do not believe this is not a conversation you could have. And uh, I believe we would need to earn back the credibility and trust of Hamiltonians, absolutely. But we, we would be honored to have the privilege of hearing their voices. I do not believe this is a conversation you would not be able to have. Thank you, and just my uh, just a comment uh, to the chair, Stephanie. Again, I uh, as well uh, very much appreciate you coming forward, being candid uh, with the answering of the questions, uh, and understanding the challenge and, and taking on us, quite frankly, which is uh, uh, refreshing. And at any time I see somebody taking on us, it suggests to me that there are people of credibility and are people that we can really, truly move uh, forward and work with. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I, too, I, my question was just answered, actually, that I was going to ask myself. And um, I guess uh, out of all this, Stephanie, I do also want to thank you. Uh, it has, it's not an easy position to be in, I'm sure, in, in, in um, refuting your credibility and your, your firms. Um, as you can tell, certainly by the comments and questions around this table, and by obviously the involvement to date on this process, how passionate our city is. Yeah. And um, you know whether it comes across in an abrupt way or uh, a friendlier way, you know there's all different uh, voices and personalities. And uh, but I think we all have one heartfelt interest, and that's this community. So I want to thank you um, for what you've done here today and in, in standing up. And um, certainly we'll see where this goes forward now with regards to the next section. Councillor Clark, I'll to that. So, do you mind, Madam Chair, if I ask some quick questions about the contract before we go into the in-camera portion then? I have no problem with that, Councillor. Are you directing this to staff now or to Stephanie? Um, it or could both. be both because I'm Thank trying you. to get clarification in terms of what the language means. In, on page 5 and page 10 of the contract, it indicates that our staff are going to be involved in the consultation in the same way that the, the citizens are, that the staff and the public are engaged in the conversation. We propose that staff be engaged in the conversation in similar ways at the same time as the public and stakeholders are engaged. Can you explain how that usually works? Because it's usually our staff that are receiving the information as opposed to having the dialogue. Yeah. 
through you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, uh, the staff may have an additional response, but I'll, I'll answer from our perspective. In our experience of having conversations about city services, city staff have incredibly valuable and important input to provide that is very different from the perspective of citizens who experience the services and understand them through their use, but staff understand them through the operation of them. So we designed a process that included input from both views so it could be put together for your consideration in decision making. That would mean that for every public event or conversation there would be a similar staff conversation. So that city staff who have ideas or answers to questions or you know changes or ideas about how to do things differently could be engaged in the conversation and that, that also would be reported publicly to citizens mm -hmm. so they understood it and vice versa. So almost parallel. Yes. Okay. Um, on page 14 of the report, Madam Chair, and I'm cognizant of the time, so I'm going relatively quickly, it indicates that the IA uh, um, P2, which is the International Association of Public Participation, another acronym, um, that they, you're suggesting that they would peer review um, the final document that is put together by your team. Does that still stand? Um, through you, Madam Chair. So I believe that what you're reading is our initial proposal and response to the RFP. The plan itself has changed a number of times over the last nine months. That was an initial thing we did include. It was removed as a cost savings measure. Now, given what we've gone through now, and if given if the city was to suggest that we may proceed, um, what would your comment be with regards to um, the benefits of having a peer review now? Through you, Madam Chair, certainly that, that would be a good idea. And the normal fee for that, um, again, we would take that up with what Councilor Whitehead, Whitehead and, and Councilor Jackson had talked about earlier, that it would be taken under consideration in terms of what you would charge. Mm -hmm. um, the licensing fees for the training, are we paying the licensing fees for the training for the software, it looks like? Through you, Madam Chair. Our gift to the City of Hamilton, training to build skills and knowledge. Um, it says there's no extra cost beyond licensing fees, so I'm not sure whether or not we actually pay for anything. Yeah. Through you, Madam Chair, the five-day International Association for Public Participation Certificate and Public Participation is usually an individual cost of between $1,500 and $1,800 per person when it's taken publicly. And um, so we are delivering it to the city of Hamilton, um, the 25 participants, with the charge of the licensing fee that is returned to the organization and no charge for our team, our trainer's time in the room or for the follow-up coaching and... Excellent, thank you. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, was the software was called SurveyMonkey? Mm-hmm. Um, now, SurveyMonkey is approved by MFIPA in Ontario, but on page 25, I have a concern that you talk about developing a stakeholder database and that the database would be compiled by lists and contact information provided by the administration of the city, community groups, and the mayor of council. Our MFIPA doesn't allow us to hand over names to you. Mm -hmm. Through you, Madam Chair, when we initiated the project and met with the corporate advisory team many times, we asked for suggestions on who's a community group we should talk to, who's a, who's an, you know, an organization that should be part of this conversation, and they made a list, and we did research in order to create a stakeholder list of who is out, out there, and then created a database from that. Excellent. And then, and I'm sorry, just to supplement, and then people have signed up for the newsletter and added themselves to the contact list in the three days that they were able to do that. So to be clear then, the contact list of the database is being developed as people connect in, if you will. We didn't provide you with an outright database, say, here, you can use this. Through conversation with the city of Hamilton, there were suggestions about organizations that would be good through many different interactions, um, and we compiled that into a list. Okay. Um, question on page 55 of the document it talks about the city of Calgary, and it indicates that at the end, at the end of the point where they, were, they had the final approval, approximately 20 citizens turned up to speak about the final decision with few concerns. And yet at the beginning of the process, there looked like there were thousands involved in it. Um, 
how do you reconcile that you go from 23,000 participants involved to only 20 people turning up to be involved in the final stages? Were they just tired of talking about it, or these guys were real keeners? Through you, Madam Chair. Historically, the City of Calgary's um, budget conversation process has been a system of delegations to committee over days and weeks, um, with hundreds of people showing up to, to comment on the specific area of the budget that matters to them, that they want to hold on to. Instead of doing that, we ran the budget consultation or the business planning and, and city service and budget consultation last year, of which 24,000 people were involved. And so the contrast to the number of people who showed up Responded at the to the surveys, but they didn't show up at the meetings. That's right. Got it. Yes. Okay, um, last question, Madam Deputy Mayor, if I may. Um, this one's important to me. I'm looking at the summary of experience of all of the partners that you have, and it looks like you've got nine people working directly with the firm and two others who are under contract as an associate. But I only found two that really had any experience in social media. And that seems to be the bugaboo where things went south. Lots of experience in facilitating meetings and, 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 and converging ideas together and, and bringing people together and, and managing disparate viewpoints. Mm -hmm. That's indicative throughout. But when we're talking about the social media, which is that thing where everyone's anonymous and they can say whatever they want in 140 characters or less, I don't see anything except for two of your, your associates who have some experience in social media. Yeah. Is that a problem? Um, so through you, Madam Chair, the um, team that's listed last January in this response from proposal is different than the team in some ways that is working on this now. With the approval of the city, we've, we've changed some members of the team and certainly some members of our company have changed over the last year. The individual in charge of social media has extensive experience with social media. On, on this project has extensive experience with it. And so have they experienced anything like we have here where people have became so vitriol? Through you, Madam Chair. Um, so, no. And Welcome to thank you. <laughs> All my questions. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's it, Councillor Clark. Councillor Marula, we have, we're moving on. We still have the Mr. Just Murray's lastly, presentation. Just lastly, I have a question. Thank you. I, I need uh, one more reconciliation because uh, Councillor Clark mentioned Calgary, and I'm just uh, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. The Calgary editorial, can you just elaborate on why they felt so strongly um, that it was such a waste of time and effort in Calgary? Sure, through you, Madam Chair. I believe you're referring to an opinion piece in the Calgary Herald that was distributed on Twitter. I guess I would say it goes a bit back to having a full conversation with all voices covered because of the media coverage on that project, there are probably 20 or 30 articles, including editorials in the Calgary Herald, that speak to what a fabulous process it was. It won an award from the Canadian Association of Municipal administrators last year for innovation and um, meaningful engagement. So absolutely there was one opinion piece in the Calgary Herald and likely there were some other pieces that weren't necessarily entirely positive but there is a wealth of positive media on that project as well. Okay. And lastly when you say that the city approved everything that went on the web page on a website and everything you did was there an actual physical signature accordingly? So are you, asked, through you, Madam Chair, you're asking did someone actually put their signature on every piece? Yeah. Of, so through you, Madam Chair, it's so it, um, in a way that is not similar to a construction project, for example, um, with sign offs at every step. Um, we submitted every piece, we had multiple meetings to review everything, and we do ha got absolute confirmation from the city that everything was approved. But there, we don't have a piece of paper with a signature on every document, no. Right. May, may I suggest in the future that you do? Uh, I think, <laughs> I, and I think we should as a corporation as well. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thank you again, Steph. Might I ask a question, Madam Chair? Absolutely. Do you want me to, thank you, thank you. Do you want me to stay 
or are you done with me? I, so, I, uh, I wouldn't so, put it that way, but I would, uh, I would respectfully say I'll reword no. that, yes. 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 <laughs> but um, I'm not yeah. sure if more questions may come out depending what other information follows, so you may in your own interest like to sit in and listen. Okay. Please make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. So does Mr. Murray have a recommendation for us in terms of well, uh, Councillor, there's a now? presentation that I think Mr. Murray wishes to make next on this whole process also, in fairness to staff. I think that uh, that's the next step to get all the information on the table. Questions yeah, if I can you? through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, certainly a chance you know, for staff, as you point out, to make a presentation of things that have transpired uh, prior to last Monday. Um, I think in terms of uh, we probably should have some conversation, if you wish, in camera about you may have questions about the actions of staff. You may have questions uh, that uh, our, our acting city solicitor would deem to be appropriate in camera. Um, I think there needs to be a, a conversation, a dialogue, I think, amongst ourselves in that uh, forum. Uh, and then that will, um, I, I can certainly provide you my advice in that, in that forum as to how I see things and how SMT for that matter see things and we can make decisions accordingly. So um, I, I wouldn't want to blurt out right now what's, what I think uh, uh, we should do. Thank you. Then to that, Mr. Murray, is this going to be dealt with in camera? Are you saying are you? No, going to, are you the going to? Uh, the presentation you have here through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, is one that uh, we can make in public, and okay. uh, as we said, we'd like to provide as much as we possibly can in public. Go ahead. Thank you. All the uh, Nova Cane is gone. This is perfect. Did you fix that That's an easy one. <laughs> so, um, Madam Chairman and members of council, we're doing a tag team. I'm going to walk you through uh, how this started, uh, the process. Um, and then Paul will talk with respect to the, the launch. Um, this all started with asset management. So this was a public works initiative. Um, you were called back in, pardon me? Infrastructure asset management. And primarily after we did the state of the infrastructure report, we did in 05, all the public works assets. We enhanced that with all the assets of the, uh, of the city of Hamilton. We then came in 2000 and, uh, oh, perfect. It's been a while since I've been up here. There we go. So in 2009, we did a, a comprehensive of all the assets within the, the city of Hamilton. And as you recall, we do the report card. We were one of the first in, in uh, Canada, North America, outlining um, the condition of our assets and what our deficit was. Based on that 2009 meeting, the issue of the uh, growing deficit, we then decided how do we determine what uh, levels of service should be. What we were, we were directed to go away and, and come back in June, and the key questions are here. You know, what level of uh, service should we be providing at the city, meaning the condition of the roads, um, response time to water main breaks, delivery of community, uh, you know, facilities, recreational facilities, all of the assets. Uh, what's the value for that level of service? And I'm not going to read the slide, but what we then did is we uh, approved what we need to, how do we develop and implement it? And one of the key things is that this isn't something that, geez. Let me get my glasses. <laughs> I'm a bit of a deficit, I think. <laughs> Which one is it? This one? Okay. So the asset man. Thank you, Carolyn. So, so we. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, that's because she's. That's because she's watching. The. I think what's important is the. Um, we have the aging infrastructure. We're one of the older municipalities, again, uh, with in Ontario, not alone Canada, North America. So cost-effective services and how do we do that? And then the desired outcome 
is a clear connection between what is needed and really what is the level of service that the community wants. Because we've been very good at saying, here's what you need, as opposed to asking them what they wanted. And that's how this all came about. February 2011, we formed the cross-departmental corporate advisory team, and this, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and how do we develop a, a citizen engagement strategy? Uh, and this was for public works assets, our infrastructure assets. It then became SMT, as we worked through the, the strategic plan and established our priorities, this should be for all of the assets of the corporation, not just public works. So it was put on hold, and then we, we have a complete cross-departmental team that was put together. Based on that, we then went out to the market uh, in April of last year, and we put out the RFP for the engagement. So here's the corporate advisory team, and it covers all departments. It has public works, it has community services, it has corporate services. Uh, Brett Browett from EMS was on it, and planning and economic development. So this is the overall team that worked and looked at, and they had a number of uh, corporate advisory team meetings with dialogue partners and city staff. And so these meetings took place throughout the April, um, once the contract was awarded right through to the launch period. So the procurement process, and I know Rick Mail is here to talk, and Mike Zagarek, but we issued it on January 31st. We closed the 17th. One of the things is the citizen engagement process is something that is unique. Nobody in North America, in municipal, um, uh, municipal government and um, infrastructure assets has really done this. We went to what they do over in Europe, and we went to what they do in New Zealand and Australia who are leaders in asset management. We hired RV Anderson to assist us with putting together the specs for the proposal and to evaluate the proposal. And RV Anderson was involved in our previous state of the infrastructure reports. So we used a consultant, because we, we do not have the expertise in house to establish the RFP or, in, or you know, to evaluate it. So we did hire RV Anderson. We used a price per point methodology used to evaluate the proposal. So the document contains specific technical requirements that we want, uh, and we assign points to them. We then have a two envelope system. We review the technical information of all the submissions. That, so you have compliance submissions, meaning the, the, on the closed date of February 17th, we had five uh, bids come in, they were all compliant. We then open the technical envelope and we do our assessments. All those who pass that assessment, we then open the financial envelope. So again, there was fly, five compliant bids. The only one to score, we required a, a score of 80 or greater. The only successful proponent was Dialogue Partners. The other bidders were Deloitte, Lura, Mass, and Workplace Solutions. But this was wide open to anyone and everybody. You know, it's been referred to, why, why not Hamilton? Well, it was open for Hamilton. Anyone could bid on this project, just like all of our contracts. It's wide open for the community uh, to bid on the projects. We issued the letter to Dialogue Partners April 2nd. The PO was issued in the amount of 402-450, and it's the $376 was a negotiated price. Here's the original time frame. So you can see we wanted to start in April, and there's four phases, and we would be ideally done around this time. What's happened, and I'll walk through it, is we wanted to ensure that uh, while it was a full cross-departmental process, we also had the service delivery review in process. Service delivery review required, I'm not going to go through each of those, we can come back to the, the, the stages. The service delivery review required a public engagement process when we endorsed that, that project. So now the two, the two were going uh, hand in hand. The dialogue partners was ahead of it, but what happened is we wanted to ensure the, the public consultation component where we were going in the same direction. And so in, in saying that, the original scope of work that was given to dialogue partners was expanded uh, as they, they assisted with the service delivery review and how that public engagement would, would be moving forward. 
And so again, they worked with the SDR team and Mike um, uh, was the lead at the time, gathering the content and again, revised the engagement material. So from May to December, we reestablished a project uh, corporate advisory team because it's now all the assets, no longer just the public work uh, infrastructure assets. And I, you know, there was five departments in there. One-on-one -on -one interviews with council, senior management team, and key staff have taken place over that that period. Uh, established a detailed citizen engagement plan. Again, you were talking about this earlier, and this is something we worked hand in hand with dialogue partners, and we had full, we were full participants. Established the media and communication plan, and initiated the development of the project communication infrastructure. So again, this was a joint effort. We were, uh, the corporate advisory team uh, was part of it all the way through, endorsing what dialogue partners was doing. One of the key things, the International Association of Public Participation, and we had two days of, of the five have taken place. This is, this is so good for the city of Hamilton. We have so many public engagement things we do, not just for assets. We have environmental assessments, we have uh, public information centers, and goes on, and all departments use it. You, you train 25 people, and you now have that uh, experience and expertise in-house, and that was one of the, the legacy benefits that was critical for this project. SMT, we were updated through the, the process. Information report, September 19th to uh, GIC, where we outline the scope of the project, how we've, um, uh, you know, we've engaged the consultants, the magnitude of the work uh, with respect to uh, delivering the, the engagement. And, you know, really at this point, the asset management process as we've moved through it has been innovation and we've taken risks all the way through. This is the next level. When I first came to you with asset management, I told you, you know, we just want to get started, take the first step. Um, you know, we, I used to say ask for apologies or forgiveness, uh, but even when, you know, when we were going through, even when I fell flat on my face, I knew I was moving ahead with the process because we need it for the aging infrastructure. It's, this is addressing $15 billion in assets that we have to look at. And then they completed the, the Cityscape Services uh, workbook. Um, I don't know if it was uh, sent out. It's this document which provides uh, the scenarios. Of, and if you read through this document, you know, we, I did confirm we didn't give a, uh, an acronym listing, but we've worked over the last nine months with uh, dialogue partners. They have our state of the infrastructure reports. They have every report we have. And when you read through this document they put together, they know what's going on in Hamilton, not only from a service delivery review, but also financially. So, you know, it, we did get good value up until the time that Paul has to get up and talk. <laughs> so, sorry. So one more. So the project team, we reviewed and approved all the communication materials, print and online. We, we were fully aware of it as staff, as the corporate advisory team. We provided the photos that went up on Pinterest. That was back in, I think, August or September. We have a screenshot of what we gave them. It was there. Um, so we know that what, what we provided as staff, and, and Stephanie has spoken to the balance. Uh, the service delivery review, I don't need to go into that. That you know is critical for the city. Um, and just reading the service delivery review, every profile and sub-profile and service in there it talks about, and they, they're intimate with that in working with the service delivery team. They help book events and venues and training, and then John Murray and Paul Johnson met, uh, or tried to meet with most counselors leading up to the launch to say where we're going. Because we were gonna launch in September, and we thought, well, let's make sure uh, we have the information available for council. So we then, um, we had those meetings prior to Christmas, and then after, we went to uh, January 7th. And Paul's taking over. I'll get out of your way. Still one of the So, all right. Thanks, Jerry. 
Madam Deputy Mayor, uh, my involvement in this project has, has been uh, since its inception. I was pleased to be a representative from the city manager's office on the corporate advisory team. And as the strat plan was uh, approved and there was a, a focus placed on citizen engagement and Chris's leadership around that, uh, this became a project that I was very interested in on a couple of fronts. One is particularly the training aspect of it. Secondly, the broad uh, and uh, innovative may be too strong a word, but certainly different approach we are taking around uh, engagement. It's always good to learn from those processes. We learn through Citizens Forum. Uh, we learn through the cultural plan that used uh, a citizen jury uh, process as well. And we were going to learn through this process, get training for our staff, and through the process also as part of this, uh, this project partnership, start to develop some language that would be a policy framework that would be discussed here, uh, here at uh, committee and council. So that was some of the background. John John Murray and I worked very closely together on this, uh, did travel around, meet with many councillors together. Uh, John met with some uh, on his own when I wasn't able to be, and then email information went out to some. And as John was away, uh, uh, because of my knowledge of the project, I said, absolutely no problem, I can be here as a, as a connector for, for council and staff, and also for uh, some of the media inquiries. And so that was uh, led to, to me being really involved uh, in terms of the launch. Uh, last week. So the project did launch on January the 7th, as you know. You received a briefing note from me uh, announcing that we would be heading out into the public realm through a media release that followed shortly after the note you received. There was an initial incident. I'm not going to go through uh, things in great detail. I think you've heard a little bit about it. We've tried to capture for you as staff uh, some of the timing just so that you have a good uh, chronology of what happened and, and why we made certain decisions. So on Monday evening you have the time frame here and here is the initial conversation that uh, we, we've talked about so far today. Uh, the reaction uh, to that exchange continued to escalate and um, an online apology was provided through that, but the amount of, of negative feedback continued to grow as well. Uh, it grew in terms of emails that I received directly from staff, uh, from you directly, and in many cases through your office directly as well. And those were sometimes funneled to me through other staff or funneled to me directly. It's important to note, though, that we had this, uh, we had some other problems begin to surface along the way. There was, uh, just after 11 o'clock, uh, an alert uh, through the city, it was actually through staff uh, channels, that uh, the YouTube video of the city manager launching this project, it's about a minute and 10 second video, uh, loaded up similar videos that were extremely inappropriate. Uh, so not only embarrassing uh, the project, but also uh, connecting our city manager to things that I'm sure he does not want to be connected with. We notified dialogue partners of this immediately and uh, they worked on that. Through late January 7th, uh, as uh, some of us slept and into January 8th, uh, reports were emerging around pictures that were not of Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, we asked dialogue partners to investigate the origins of those images. And if you heard today, we still don't have a conclusive uh, piece around that. I was part of a team that did look at, uh, at some of the pieces that, that went live in terms of the website, actually had a chance to play with the website in its beta format and look at the Pinterest site. And at the time, we got an introduction to Pinterest through some of the, uh, the, the images that were there. They were all images of Hamilton, uh, things like the logo of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, there was a bit of a poem or some kind of a, a story that was there. It was really to show us the kinds of things that would be added to the site, uh, but they were all appropriate and they were all of Hamilton. The second incident occurred when it was uh, clear that the Our Voice, Our Hamilton website was compromised and included a redirect of users to a payday loan site. We asked Dialogue Partners to investigate. The response that they uh, replied to us around what had happened was that yes, it had been uh, hacked to use the parlance and uh, the, the malware that uh, is a more technical term was injected into the header files and some of the plugins. The site was compromised and they alerted us they did not know how exactly or by whom at the time that uh, we were raising these issues. They did search the original code for the site, and so they were able to ascertain that the malware did not come from dialogue partners or the IT subcontractor themselves. In other words, they didn't put it there by mistake uh, themselves. The remedies for this were to take out the malicious code, uh, to monitor the site throughout the day, and to begin, as Stephanie has told you, uh, work on a fresh site. The estimate of that work was at least a day to complete. Uh, might have been a little bit longer, but at, uh, at the, the, the time frame was about a day. 
On January 9th, on Wednesday, uh, this, the, there are still websites, uh, issues that continued, inappropriate questions, which you've talked about, were added to the WED survey. Um, and around 6 p.m., we did make the decision to shut down the site and instructed dialogue partners that that is what we wanted to do and sent some information to you, shortly followed by the media. Not only that, we decided to put the project essentially on pause uh, the following morning in conversation with SMT that was confirmed that we would not go forward with a public session that would have happened this past Saturday at the Sackville Hill uh, Seniors Recreation Centre. So that decision was made not immediately, uh, despite uh, I think some commentary that you know we, we uh, reacted to what was going on. As you can see from the timelines, it was about uh, 48 hours almost precisely from when the first incidents happened to that decision. At the time, the conversations that occurred between a number of people uh, and ultimately with a conversation with Chris was that we were just a bit unclear about the, in, the security of the site uh, moving forward and felt that it was in the best interest to take this pause so that we could talk about this. Uh, the other piece was that, uh, as some have mentioned, the comments that were coming in uh, were not just from a few sources but from many sources and working with your offices and hearing from your offices, uh, there were an awful lot of concerns about a number of things that as we were running in those first 48 hours, uh, we weren't able to fully understand exactly how we were going to fix all of those issues, so the pause was taken. There are some points of clarification, most of them have been made. Uh, there have been some concerns raised about website accessibility. Those concerns were raised actually by the city and answered accordingly that uh, there were, uh, uh, that the website itself met uh, enough of the standards in terms of providing accessibility to as many residents as possible, that uh, there was satisfaction that we could move forward. Also the recognition that this was not a project to only drive people to a website or electronic tools, that there were many, many ways for people to engage in conversation, uh, both physically on their own through materials that could be uh, easily provided to folks as well as online uh, capabilities. The decision to shut down the website, uh, we've talked about the reasons around that. The collection of personal information and use of Survey Monkey has been explained by Stephanie and all of those explanations match up with exactly what we were both hearing from our consultant and the conversations we had prior to the, the launch of the, uh, the project. The photos, uh, the one photo that uh, wasn't discussed too much, we have clarified that in terms of, of emails and information for council, uh, but just to be clear that the website photos were always provided by the city, they were always of the city, there was no changes that took place and the one photo that was in question is actually of uh, uh, taken on the North Service Road in Stony Creek, uh, not in another community. So those photos uh, were never in question uh, in terms of, of any of the, uh, the chaos that reigned, I guess, in those first few days. So that takes you through a little bit of what we saw as staff in those initial periods of time. Uh, we did make a number of media statements in the very early hours of it, as well as, uh, as getting out some information to you, so you had at least some uh, answers to the questions that you were fielding. Uh, and then we felt it was important to gather information together and decide what the next steps are. And as you can hear, some of those questions still remain today. We don't have all the answers of what happened in that initial period, uh, but we're, uh, we really did feel that there was a chance here for us just to, to think about it. We did not uh, kill the project or stop the project in its entirety. And as many people have mentioned, the importance of the engagement and the importance of the project as a whole uh, is still critically important to, to us as staff who have been involved in this, all of the team, uh, as well as many of you have chimed in that that's the case in your minds as well. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Um, I have a speaker's list, but I just want to verify and confirm that is a picture of the North Service Road, which is in my ward, and that is me in the picture, and that was the opening of the bike, bicycle trail on the north side of the QEW. I think the, mayor is, the mayor's leading. And the mayor's the, uh, in it also, yes. <laughs> But the, That's what do they right. call the packs of uh, bikes, pantalon or something like that? Okay. So I know I saw this when I went on the site initially and you, this is Hamilton. Thank you. I do have a speakers list now, so I'm sorry. Councillor Duval, Councillor Marula, Councillor Whitehead, Councillor Clark. Thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks, Paul and Jerry, uh, for, for coming forward and, and giving us the details. And Paul, I want to thank you because when it got my attention there, I think it was Tuesday morning at 7.30 in the morning, you answered me uh, in a very quick fashion to answer to my residents. So thank you for that. Um, 
the pictures that we're talking about in question, did we provide uh, DR any of these pictures? Uh, I understand we did with that one, the bicycle. Did we, did we give them any picture of our city hall in Hamilton here? Through the chair, I, I'm not sure if we did or not. We, but all the photos that were given, we have a screenshot of them, so we can produce that. Um, I don't know the exact ones that were given, but they're they're verified by uh, by the uh, corporate advisory team that that went on. So we can we can give you exactly the ones that we were we gave to the uh, uh, to be put up on Pinterest. Okay, and I, I asked uh, Stephanie from from DR uh, the question of. Uh, who has final approval, what goes on to the website on pictures or uh, any kind of statement from the city. And, and she explained that we do, the city staff does, correct? Through the chair, that's correct. We've approved everything, all the content for both uh, any, any release of information, the website content. We did approve the photos. So everything was approved by city staff. So we approved the photos from Washington and... That's not, that's not what I, I answered. So the photos we approved, we have, and we can provide you copies. There's, it, as has been indicated, Pinterest, photos are on Pinterest that didn't come from the city. We can show you exactly what we approved to go up. Okay, because the, the answer that she gave, she did not know the answer if we, the city approved it or not. So you're saying we did not approve those two photos? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Just to clarify the website Pinterest difference um, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, the, the website is, is static, so the image is there. We absolutely know what was provided, when, and if those had changed, we'd be able to tell you, well, here's what it is, and, and someone changed those. When it came to Pinterest, we, we had a, a firm understanding from uh, Dialogue Partners that those pictures would change as the project rolled forward, uh, as would, of course, the comments on Twitter or, or ha what have you. So in, in uh, those cases, the expectation expectation was that yes the city could push photos through there we didn't ever do that uh, in terms of once it went live no one sent any photos uh, to Pinterest um, in advance of that there were pictures that were of Hamilton Ontario that we saw on the, on the website when we were testing it out but that could have changed at all times and in fact one of the conversations we had of course was how do we ensure that if something goes up that we need to uh, to, to talk about or is inappropriate that it's it's removed things like that will happen when you have the interactiveness of, of those types of sites so in terms of Pinterest it was never going to be static and I guess the answer is that that any, any initial uh, uh, viewing of that site, we saw it, but we always knew that it would be changing. So that, that was the nature of that piece. Okay, thank you. And, and just one other um, question is, there was a statement that says, talk to people and then brackets that had a rab original newcomer in low income. Um, Stephanie admitted that that was DR's way of say, expressing it. Did we approve it to be written in that manner? Through, through the uh, the chair, I'll, I'll have to talk to the, the team, but anything that did go out with respect to the, um, the the launch, prior to the launch, we were aware of everything that went. So I, I can't say yes or no definitely, but we were, we were aware, so we definitely uh, um, were accountable as the City of Hamilton and a partner for it going on. Okay, um, Mr. So Madam Chair, I, I, I'm having um, difficult trying to understand what uh, either we approve it or we don't approve it. So if we are approving things, are we proofreading what's going on there and then reacting afterwards? So through the chair, we would proofread everything. It, we would, there was meetings held between the corporate advisory team and dialogue partners. Uh, information to be released, we would review it, comment on it, edit it, and then we would sign off on it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And just just a couple of questions. Uh, through you, uh, Jerry, or uh, I presume Jerry or Paul, whoever whoever else might want to uh, uh, weigh in on this question. Throughout the entire process, and, and I think we've discussed the fact that the purpose, the objective, uh, the our purchasing policy, all of that's been been, been done well, and, and we all supported it strongly. The the question becomes with respect to the I guess lack of local engagement and. In the specs themselves, to you, uh, Deputy Mayor, why would we not have 
engaged our the local expertise as it pertains to social media, considering we are one of the most sophisticated communities in all of Canada as it, as it pertains to social media. So, th so through the chair, I, I'll address the, the RFP that went out on the street. So the RFP was a document which had a number of components within it, um, and it's wide open to everybody, not excluding uh, Hamilton um, uh, entrepreneurs or businesses from Hamilton. It's wide open, uh, you know, our procurement process. So, and when the bids come in, uh, we were, you know, we review it with respect oh, to that. I know you're talking about the social media wasn't a specific. We asked for a, a citizen engagement process, which could have included social media, and, and, and I don't know enough about everything else that was included in it. I don't know if if Rick wants to talk with respect to the procurement process, but you know, it it, it did follow all our policies. Granted, and I'm not suggesting it didn't. I guess to you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, and I, I know uh, in hindsight uh, uh, things seem clearer. Uh, I think in hindsight, what I see as uh, as one of the errors, probably one of the most significant errors, is not capitalizing on our on our own la local talent, not in the full scope of the project, but just in the isolation of going out to the community uh, through social through social media and our sophistication. Mm -hmm. The presently be that exists here in, in Hamilton more so than anywhere else in Canada. So in saying that, I guess I'm, I'm just saying uh, perhaps that is something for us to acknowledge going forward, uh, particularly in trying to salvage what I believe to be a project that's off the rails. So uh, on that front, um, with, resp with respect to um, uh, the, the, the RFP, clearly I think everything uh, from your perspective went well. I think the issue now becomes who approved what and when it went public. Clearly we have a situation where it's a he said, she said scenario. And through you, Deputy Mayor, what you're saying in essence is that you, what we approved as, as city staff was not what was posted on the web page. Is that correct? Go through the uh, the chair. No, that's not what we're saying. What what was posted, city staff um, reviewed and approved up until the launch. Okay, when the I don't use Twitter, so I'm not up to speed. So comments coming back in, we weren't part of that. Okay, but when they did the launch, up until that point, the information, um, what was being used, the the content, the verbiage. Uh, city staff were part of that process. So, and that, at what time did the hack occur or alleged hack? The information we had uh, have from uh, uh, from Dialogue Partners through their subcontractor is either very late on the Monday evening, so January the 7th, or very early in January 8th. So we're talking, you know, I would say to give you a time frame, 11 p.m. till 1 a.m., somewhere in that range. Okay. So just to clarify, what they originally posted, we signed off on, provided approval, but it was exactly what was supposed to be posted. Do we have any proof to that effect of that time period where everything was, was basically posted as approved? Or is it just hearsay at this point? Well, through the, the, uh, through the, the deputy mayor, um, you know, we've been at it for nine months. We work with them. We approve things. They move forward. So, um, you know, the documents that the corporate advisory team would have seen. Um, do we have initialed off? Here's what's definitely going on. No. Is it hearsay? I would. You know, I, I'm confident that our staff did review it, and what we reviewed is what Dialogue Partners put on the uh, for the launch. But I don't have a signed off copy to verify it. All right. Which brings me to the next point, which I brought forward earlier, surrounding the fact that I think for future reference, the physical uh, signing off on anything is, should be mandatory. Also, um, just clearly on the hack question, that's part of the contract. Would you not say it to you, Madam Deputy Mayor? Would that not be, or would that not fall within the parameters of the of the RFP? And the due diligence expected and being paid for by the city of Hamilton is to protect the content that's posted? So through the chair, uh, yes, you know, the, they are, they're experts in this field. They've done this work before. They've indicated uh, they have done it. Um, the hack came um, and they've, you know, they're, they're looking into it. Um, but part of the overall contract is the delivery of a, of a finalized project that we're looking for. Okay. 
So clearly what we have here, what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that we had a process that's been in place for a number of months that basically was unanimously approved by council, which we, the process was merited, the process was uh, integrity filled. Everything was working perfectly, signed off by staff until the breach of security. Is that correct? So everything was, everything was working brilliantly until that security breach occurred and the pictures of uh, Hamilton, Washington appeared and so on. Is that correct to say? That coupled with the Twitter communication. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, the, the Twitter incident really heightened the expectations. So the one piece I would add is, uh, I'll put it this way, from an individual who was responding to it, um, it, it wasn't the hack that got me on the ceiling and, and, and got me doing a lot of thumb work on my BlackBerry. It was the Twitter exchange and what was escalating after that, uh, which is why that's listed as, as sort of incident one. Incident two compounded that quite significantly when then it was also uh, publicly known uh, because everybody was following it. Of course, there had been a hack and then it called into question, of course, the security and the integrity of the website and the information that people were, were putting in. So those happened in quick succession. I understand that. But I, I, so I would say that the, the hack of the, of the site was what uh, significantly compounded some of the other things that were, that were going on because then we had to worry about not just a comment made and a conversation that was occurring, but also had to worry about information and, and uh, then you're into all the checks of all of the information that was there and those kept coming, unfortunately, um, uh, not unfortunately because it's helpful from the public, but unfortunately because we couldn't be proactive in cleaning them up. Every time we got a new issue that was being revealed, it just seemed to be a reactionary piece that was happening. Okay, so clearly what we need to emphasize here, and I was, for the record, part of that original Twitter conversation when the HSR question occurred. So I, I recall vividly that I had no knowledge of anything else that was going on with respect to the web page and the errors on the web page. But in the communication, I clearly illustrated uh, a significant problem at that time. So just to clarify, the due diligence from our perspective, from a council perspective, from a purchasing perspective, from a, ma a contract management perspective, to the approvals were all in place. Everything went off the rails at the time of the Twitter communication and the web page content, which allegedly uh, allegedly occurred as a direct result of a security breach. Is that correct? Through the, the chair, everything up to the launch, we, we signed off. It, right. the, the issue arose once the Twitter and the hack occurred. Yes. Okay. And the reason why we're here today is because of the Twitter communication, which had nothing to do with our staff and everything to do with the agency and the content and the hack itself has nothing to do with our staff, but we paid an agency to provide that service. So why we would be pointing fingers at our own staff at this point, is clearly unfair, even if it's not directly being done, but I think it's being in some way um, assumed in some cases. If anybody is suggesting that, I'm not saying they have, I'm just saying people are asking about approvals and so on, and I didn't, didn't like the, the tone of where this might be headed. Clearly, to deduce this down accurately, our staff had nothing to do with the breach in the security of the web page and nothing to do with the Twitter communication, and the agency is entirely responsible for that. So let's move forward and try to fix this before it gets worse. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to start with the RP, RFP. So uh, it's been suggested the RP, uh, when it was launched, all the criteria, processes, and policies were followed through. All the follow-ups were and contacts were made. Is that correct to the chair? So, the, so through the chair, the the RFP we went through the due process, followed procurement policies, and awarded it to the the consultant. Set the set a, a working committee up and worked hand-in-hand hand with them as we went through the process. 
Now, uh, how, how would the community that may provide uh, part of, or a level of this service in the, uh, um, sorry, service providers in the community, how would they become aware of this tender? How, how would the notification go out? Um, through the procurement process, we have a, um, I don't want to say the word, Rick's coming, he can sit down. We, we have it on the website, there's a software that they use that's open to, to everyone and, and anyone. So Rick, do you, uh, what's the name of it? I... That's you, you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, there's two ways vendors are notified. Vendors register that they're interested in doing business with the City of Hamilton. One of the categories is consulting. There were 117 vendors registered with the City in the consulting fields. They were all sent notification that this bid opportunity was going to be posted on Bid and Go. And then uh, that was publicly posted out on Bid and Go. We posted it at the uh, uh, ninth floor standard life building it's advertised on bid and go um, and as a result of that we ended up receiving five proposals thank you uh, was there anyone pre-qualified uh, in this process so was this an open process or was it a pre-qualified process through you madam deputy mayor it was an open process uh, there was no pre-qualification of firms the it was an evaluated request for proposal the first part of that was to evaluate the quality of the firms making submissions Okay, I appreciate that. So in the evaluation uh, on, on the company that was awarded, uh, I, would, I believe part of that process is that we would check uh, other communities or other organizations uh, that contracted this, their service. Is that correct, through the chair? Now, through the chair, reference our um, uh, past performance is part of the check that is done as well, yes. And how did the past performance uh, uh, register in, 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 those, uh, in that investigation before rendering the contract? Well, the, um, the, the dialogue partners scored over 80%. 80, 80%. Um, we, a minimum score was 80 out of 100. I don't have the exact um, evaluations, but they, they scored very well to make it past the, the technical evaluation. Now, uh, did you have uh, or became aware at all through this RFP process or subsequent with the RFP process that they've also met, uh, had a number of mistakes in other communities that they were contracted with? Well, within their RFP submission, they identified uh, in Calgary um, the issue that had taken place. They disclosed that in the RFP. Um, so we were aware of it. Okay. Anything like what we are experiencing on this uh, launch on January? Not to my knowledge, no. Thank you. Uh, has there ever been any questions of security or, or breach of security or hacking or so forth with any of their work? in your investigation and the references? Um, I, I don't know if, if that, those questions were asked during the evaluation. I can get that information for you if that was one of the questions asked. But it didn't, it, it's nothing that, um, to the best of my knowledge, we were aware of that had happened before. Appreciate it. The, uh, the work that has been demonstrated by this consultant uh, since, I guess it's April, you had held up one of the documents that they performed and indicated that you felt that they performed very well on that. Is that correct, the chair? Through the chair, absolutely. They, they have performed well. They've adapted to our uh, service delivery review. They've, we've delayed the, uh, the process, the launch. As I put up there, they wanted to start when we awarded in April. Uh, we waited. Uh, we made it an overall corporate asset project, worked with the service delivery, asked them to reevaluate their scope, and they did it within the existing budget. And and they've, uh, they've attended, uh, they came to SMT, I think, right up until, uh, well, the project was presented at SMT in December before we went to launch. So they, they adapted to the City of Hamilton's process very well. How would you describe, through the Chair, uh, the work relationship between this consultant over the last number of months and staff? Um, through the chair, uh, very positive, very professional, very timely. They adapted. Um, they showed innovation for us in moving forward. So very pleased with the performance. And is it not true through the chair that we uh, virtually amended the uh, the RFP bid process uh, from an infrastructure focus to a, a service oriented, uh, greater service oriented uh, focus? Well, the, the document that was put out, originally when we were looking at it, it was just for in, infrastructure assets. And then SMT, we wanted to go corporate-wide. So the document that went out addressed all city services. Initially, we wanted them to look at infrastructure services. But because of the service delivery, we're trying to bring those two together. 
I'm just trying to understand, though, uh, Madam Chair, uh, was that post RFP when we uh, looked at uh, broadening the scope of this uh, engagement, or is this within the RFP process that we made that uh, amendment? The service delivery review was uh, after the award of the project, so they, they uh, amended the scope and worked with the service delivery review team after they were awarded the contract. So they were flexible uh, and malleable enough to uh, uh, expand the, and work with staff to expand this scope without increasing the cost of the delivery of the service, is that correct? Through the chair, that's correct. Um, was there a project manager on this, uh, on this file? So this had a, an overall team, so we have uh, SMT because it's a strategic priority. Uh, the, the project director on this was uh, John Murray. Uh, the, the project manager was uh, a senior project manager in Public Works, and they worked with all the corporate advisory team, including Paul and um, the list that I put up there. So the, uh, the project director, John Murray, would have been the one who um, uh, court, um, coordinated with them, communicated with them, assigned off the invoices, things like that, and working with the overall team. Just like a project manager on any consultant project we have or construction project, we have hundreds, we have a, we have a lead person, and then they rely on the support of, of the team. So I, I heard in, uh, in response to answering one of the questions uh, that um, everything would have been proofed before the launch. Is that correct, through the Chair? Yep. Uh, the, the, mo the morning of the launch, uh, did the project manager uh, uh, monitor to ensure that uh, what in fact was in f on, on, on the site was consistent with what uh, was proofed and, and uh, uh, approved? I'm not sure I'm following the question. So the, well, the, the corporate advisor. advisory team signed it off and then that's what went forward to be launched. Yeah, what I'm asking though, uh, was there a, a, a monitoring? For example, I take advertisement out with a, a, you know, some provider, and I uh, proofread and sign off on what is being advertised. I still, first thing I do is pick up the paper to ensure that what's in the paper is consistent with what I proofed. So the question I'm asking is, when it was launched uh, on that seventh in the morning. Was there any concerns raised by the, I guess, project team or Mr. Murray or whoever was supposed to be overseeing this, that the, the what was being launched was inconsistent with what was being approved, uh, what was previously approved? So oh, through the chair, not to my knowledge, no. Okay, um, and I guess my last question is, uh, is there a recommendation uh, in the context of this this contract that uh, that uh, the staff are putting forward? I think that's something we'll discuss in camera through the chair. Thank you. Thank you. I have a speaker's list, and I'm just with, uh, in all indulgence of committee, I'm just concerned that we may lose quorum going forward. And um, we have other uh, items that there's public here on. So just whatever we can do in streamlining is we also have a number of items in camera. So I have Councillor Clark, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Jackson, and Councillor Farr. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Do we have anyone from our IT department here that can answer a question for me? No? Just curious if there are any software out there that's hack proof. Have we been hacked before at the city? Anyone know, Mr. Murray? Uh, to you, Deputy Mayor, I can't answer that question, but uh, we can, though, right now, uh, email our own folks to see whether or not before this meeting is done, there's an answer. Only reason I'm asking that is we were trying to set up my driver's license, and the Ontario government shut down all the servers Ontario kiosks because they were hacked, and it was probably one of the most secure systems in North America. So I find it interesting that they had to shut down their system because some dingling wanted to have fun. Um, can I, when we go through, I'm assuming at some point, actually before I do that, um, is there any way that we can ensure that we're encouraging respectful dialogue through these social media, these twi Twitters, whatever those things are that they're using, um, and prevent the malicious anonymous postings that I see on a lot of the websites? Like I'm not, it was stated earlier, local social media can be a, a great blessing to us, and yet I've seen a lot of local social media 
where I wouldn't want to waste my time reading it because the language is so disgusting and and it's not constructive it's just nasty so how do how do we use that media tool and make sure that we're not having people who are malicious jump in there and just drown all the people who are trying to have a constructive dialogue so through the chair and you know, I'll look up for help um, again I don't uh, I'm not on social media either I, I think one of the the issues is that anyone can go on and say what they want um, I don't know if there's a a filter that is out there I don't know if anybody knows but my my sense is there isn't because you hear numerous times that um, there's inappropriate behavior on social media because of its its openness but I, I know I on a blog I can monitor a blog I know Councillor Whitehead is blog and monitors his blog but I'm not sure how they do it on this this other universe of pin, Pinterest and Twitter um, and I, I was under the impression that the Pinterest one, you can actually pin pictures yourself. If you're just, uh, I found this Pinterest site, I can actually, oh, I got this cool picture and I'm going to pin it myself and has nothing to do with the guy that actually owns the site. And I'm seeing nodding heads from IT people. So um, that's a concern. How do we provide, how do we prevent that from happening? Because I'm sure there's some interesting pictures that we wouldn't want to have on our, our site. Um, the issue with regards to going live again and making sure that we protected the privacy of the people who are logging in to comment and also um, making sure that it's accessible. Is it possible, Madam Deputy Mayor, that we could uh, have the city manager or the team, whatever that team is, it was an acronym, um, go see the privacy commissioner and have her review that site that we we've developed the the whatever that site is the the web page wherever it is that people are logging on to logging on to and talking to i sound like a complete idiot with in terms of it forgive me my kids are very i i thought lol meant lots of love and that really caused me some heartache a while ago um so <laughs> Laughing out loud and lots of love can really be a problem if you use the wrong term. Um, the wrong or the wrong person, in which I found out relatively quickly. So I'd like to ensure that privacy by design is included in what we've got for this website. And that access by design. So the quickest way for me in my world to understand that is to call Ann Kavurkian and her team and say, okay, here, we've got this, this is really new, this is unprecedented, we want to launch this, will you review this site to ensure that there are no privacy issues and that we are have created a site that by design is accessible? I'm looking around to the team, maybe Mr. Murray would be the one to answer that one. Um, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, if I can, I mean, I think that's a helpful suggestion. In fact, obviously we've been talking quite a bit about this over the last few days and uh, there are others in this community uh, that work at Mac and Mohawk that have backgrounds in social media notwithstanding Joey and others that that are in the environment uh, on a regular basis but certainly people who teach the topic that uh, uh, we were discussing that we would uh, maybe before we relaunch that we would have uh, take a bit of time to uh, you know connect with these people and get the best advice possible in light of the experience that we've had I'm not sure we'll have to make that as a direction at some point but I think it would be appropriate especially on this type of new innovative file um, and and would be great at, at looking at that um, I, I, I want to say to our staff and even to the young lady Stephanie who is here, I, I really feel for the situation you're in. I can remember at Queen's Park, um, one of the minister's chief of staff left his cell phone at a bar, but he didn't password protect it. I can't share the message I got from that minister that night, but it wasn't the minister that sent it to me. Yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> I'm really positive. Liz Whitmer wouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> password. I mean, I, I got this password. Every time I take it out of my pocket, somebody, it's, it's, it's password locked. It's that simple to have a glitch in IT that can cause significant embarrassment for any corporation, <laughs> including the city. 
you can't hack proof software is impossible. As quickly as we come up with the ways and means to protect it and make it more secure, there's some other beetle head out there that's trying to make it unsecure and come up with a way to get in the back door. They actually hire these guys to go through the back door to protect their software. Um, I really feel, Madam Deputy Mayor, that this is that old German expression, Schadenfreude, which is the, the celebration of, 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 of um, other people's misfortune. And, and, and people have just, in Hamilton, we do that a lot. We don't celebrate success, we celebrate failure. So a small error regarding an acronym exploded into an apocalyptic cloud and it just kept going. It just, just kept going and going and going. Because I can tell you, I, I did a lot of facilitation work in, in government relations work, including down, in, down into Washington. And whenever I did that, if someone used an acronym, I would stop them and ask them to clarify the acronym for the rest of the audience. Because you don't know what your audience knows. Standard procedure when you're a facilitator. So it seems to me a simple mistake exploded and then it was pile on, let's celebrate the failure of Hamilton or the failure of this group or the failure of the management team or the failure of the counselors. Um, and it's really sad. So um, if we do decide to go forward, I really want to make sure that we can somehow develop a system that we encourage respectful dialogue um, without having to censor the nonsense out of it, um, if there's a way. I'm not sure there is. Perhaps we have to change it to a blog where it could be monitored by a, a person that deals with it daily. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, Councillor Johnson, did you say you were off the list now? or In the spirit of, of time, I'll, I'll okay. save my comments for later. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Jackson? Just, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, first of all, uh, General Manager Davis and Paul Johnson, thanks for stepping up to the plate. Much appreciated, uh, Jerry. And Paul, as spokesperson on behalf of the uh, team. Um, I just want to, um, because uh, Dialogue Partners won this procurement process fair and square, and so that I'm not impugning someone who won it fair and square, I'll save my comments reserved to say them in camera, because I'll have questions of Rick Mail and Don Fisher regarding how we went from five compliant bids to just one passing the minimum score. So I'll reserve the right to speak in camera. Thanks, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Farr? Thank you, Madam uh, Deputy Mayor. Just a few questions. Uh, First of all, appreciate both uh, Jerry and Paul coming up, uh, representing a corporate advisory team that uh, literally is a who-who of uh, doers with respect to uh, the City of Hamilton staff, the McKinnons and the Spilers and the Johnsons and the Osborne, uh, Osbournes and the Spilers and everybody else on the list. So I uh, appreciate you being up here. Uh, to the uh, presentation specifically, one question with regards to um, uh, the staff training element. We know we're two days of a five-day training that uh, Dialogue Partners was uh, involved with with staff training. Is that, uh, I can't find the uh, slide right now. That means we're three days away from five days of training, which gets those 25 staff, Jerry, through uh, the deputy mayor where? At what point are they uh, considered experts? Do we no longer require consultants to help us in the future when it comes to public engagement with this five days of training? At what, what, what's, what level of training are we talking about adding to uh, the, the uh, staff, uh, current staff uh, workload? Um, so I, I, I'll try and answer that. I, I, the, the training, once you complete the five-day training, you receive a certificate from the, and that's why I, I printed out the acronym, the International Association of Public Participation, in that you become, and I... I'm going to say this, and I might have to qualify it, that you you know how to conduct a public engagement session, a public engagement session um, with respect to whatever your issue may be, and I think you're also now be you can become a mentor for other people within the organization uh, as you move through um, the uh, the process. Through the chair, we've had, I've been involved with, and I know many, probably all councillors and the mayor have been involved with PICs before where we've had these public meetings and many staff attend, and it's usually on a specific issue. Is this something above that where we have the, you know, the Steve Barnharts and, and rec staff talking about um, uh, uh, Eastwood Arena and Park? 
Uh, through the chair, it, uh, the answer is yes. It's, it's everything. So we have all our services. Uh, we're, we're doing this uh, community engagement regarding all the services for the city of Hamilton. The people who are trained with this IAP too are then uh, they can engage and mentor and, and deliver uh, sessions with respect to that. That's my understanding. To the second part of my question through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, then can we expect not having to contract out um, engagement work in the future? Is that too hard to determine at this time? The, uh, the chair, uh, yes, that's part of the, getting this gives us the legacy so that we have that expertise in house. We're three days away, okay. And then finally, on the investigation with regards to the hacking, just based on the comments that I heard, I'm wondering if, and I don't know if someone is here, it doesn't necessarily have to be from IT, and Madam Deputy Mayor, you were, uh, I think, smart enough to ask the first delegate on this issue to stick around. Maybe um, she can be helpful, I don't know. But I'm wondering, are there various levels of investigations when it comes to hacking? I, I think it's good that uh, Dialogue Partners is flipping the bill for the investigation as they did with this uh, um, full page ad on, in the A section of the Spectator today. And uh, it, it should be uh, them that takes care of it. I'm wondering uh, to what level and how successful, if they can determine, would be the income uh, outcome. As you know, we're all interested to know who who would do such a thing. And um, I, I'd, I'd wonder if uh, maybe someone could comment on that. Okay, to that question, can staff answer that? If not, I'll ask whether Stephanie can with committee's indulgence. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to assume, Paul, that they would go all out on this investigation as it's their reputation is in jeopardy. That's another reason why I'm glad they're paying for it. Uh, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, our request was that any information we can have on the, on the, the issues um, and in particular, the hacking would be would be helpful, but it was up to them to, to do that. So I'm, I'm going to ask Stephanie to talk about the specific details. We wanted to know uh, what it was that happened. Hacking is a colloquial term. We wanted to know exactly what it meant. We wanted to know what it meant for people who had logged on to the site. We got that answer that this was not something that would uh, go backwards, that it really was about uh, uh, creating some... Uh, disruption on our own on on that website so that uh, you were redirected and some some not good things were happening in terms of what we wanted people to engage in and we wanted to know what the steps were going to be taken not only to fix the problem immediately but take it forward and we're quite pleased to hear that they were actually going to rebuild and replicate the site from clean code uh, those are types of things that were useful in my mind because that was extra work so uh, that's what we asked for in the initial fray uh, and then Stephanie can can address what further investigation is happening and that'll be all my questions I'll just listen for the answer through you madam chair um, we have asked the subcontractor to do a full investigation um, into where they believe the source of the virus was and everything else uh, I would say the answer may come back to an unsatisfactory they are unable to determine um, the source of who inserted the virus and where it came from but we have asked for that and we will provide it what we have is a security log saying when the breach occurred and that there was a potential for but it doesn't tell you what was inserted or anything They've had to, they had to take apart the site in order to find the virus. So we've asked them to complete a full investigation, and we will share that with you when we get it. Through you, who's the subcontractor? Subcontractor is Purple Forge. They're a, a mobile app and website development company. So likely through you, final question, it would be in Purple Forge's best interest as a subcontractor of you to the contract as Dialogue Partners to the City of Hamilton on this Our Voice, Our Hamilton engagement strategy to do the best they can do to get to the bottom of the hacking incident. Yeah, and through you, uh, Madam Chair, they have been more than responsive on this front. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to ask one more question, just uh, it was raised as we were chatting here, um, to staff. The tools that you were utilized, um, were they pre-approved by staff? The tools used by the consultant company, were they pre-approved by staff? So, um, yeah. So, knew what the tools were. Yeah, so, thanks. <laughs> yes, we did know what the tools were, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. Appreciate all that. Um, I'm going to ask, I know, Carolyn, we didn't receive the presentation. You may note to receive the, the uh, presentation from Stephanie originally and now to receive the presentation from staff. Moved by Councillor Clark, said by Councillor Johnson. All in favor? Thank you, everyone. Before we move forward, because we have a lot ahead of us, I know Carolyn's asking because, number one, we're concerned with quorum, and number two, whether we need to have um, supper brought in. So uh, I don't know what the feeling is around committee because we still have a good chunk of work to do. And keep. I'm, we're going to keep going. I don't want to break, but do you think we're going to be past 6 o'clock that you feel? Is everyone good till 6? So we wouldn't, won't order it. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Just trying to help the clerk, too, because we have to worry about staff leaving also. I'm going to say everyone's good till 6, hopefully sooner. Hands up. I'm getting a nod, yes. Okay, thank you everyone, if not sooner, thank you. Okay, discussion items now. We're going to go on to members of committee. There are questions, are there any questions with regards to item 8.1? This is the Hamilton Follies Inc. financial assistance request. I have a motion to move it. Councillor, or Mr. Mayor is moving it, seconded by Councillor Whitehead. All in, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you, questions. I have Councillor Jackson, Councillor... Powers. Thank you. Councillor Jackson first. Thanks, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. This is about the Geritol Follies. I want to thank uh, Councillor uh, Marula's involvement on this with the Geritol Folly representatives. And so I guess, I, I mean, this is just a wonderful, wonderful institution program in our city. Um, I've attended several of the events over the years, and I'm just, I was saddened to hear what I, what I read in that uh, in the last few days. So. I, I presume, I, can I ask this question, Madam Deputy Mayor, if whoever can possibly help me with this. Um, Mr. Hertel is, Mr. Hertel is here from HECFI. To support this, to help them pay off this last loan to HECFI, hopefully that then allows them to continue in existence, or this hopefully is not the final chapter. I guess that's my hope and desire, Madam Deputy Mayor. Is there anybody that can... Are those the Geritol Folly? Oh, oh, aren't you folks so brave? You've hung well, in there Mr. six Councilor, hours today. Yes, and I'm sorry. Okay. We jumped in as questions. I'll, I'll just recognize. We have Carol Van Colhart here, uh, Sophia Bazelli, and Marlene Mallette here. Thank you. From just, Geritol Folly. Just a shout from the gallery, Madam Deputy Mayor, through one of them, if we can hopefully approve this and pay or John Hertel, one of them, pay this off. Let me hear from the Follies representative just quickly, Madam Deputy Mayor, that hopefully you hope to continue in existence. Fantastic. John, any further comment? Uh, yes, I would just say, and uh, to add to that, we've had the pleasure of working with the three board members who are seated, uh, seated I should say, uh, in the other part of the uh, council chambers, and we're very impressed with the uh, uh, approach they're taking to take ownership uh, to build a sustainable organization and certainly this uh, uh, debt uh, payment would go a long way to uh, making that possible. We've talked about working together on uh, some new programming, some additional shows and uh, really helping it wherever we can to revitalize the Geritol Falls. Thanks so much, John. I'm strongly supportive of this uh, small measure to help. Thanks, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Powers and I have Councillor Duvall and Councillor Whitehead. Mine is just a question about process where there is outstanding liabilities to, uh, to I'm going to say, at a facility that's associated with the city. Then the flow through is automatic from the city to HECFI with the acknowledgement of a credit to, uh, to Geritel Falls Ladies as a uh, receipted bill paid in full. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Duvall. Thanks, Madam Chair. And just a question. Um, when I read on page two of six, uh, the Hamilton Fallers Incorporated is attempting to avoid filing for bankruptcy by seeking financial support from various sources. Can I ask who these sources are? Is this the total debt, and we're the only ones, that, or is there more debt, and we're only being asked to, to look after this portion of the payment? We'll ask one of the uh, members to come down and answer that question or those questions. Yeah. Councillor, thank you. Please do. Yes. Madam Deputy Mayor, why don't yeah. I formally wave to allow representatives to appear and speak to answer questions at this as of this item. Thank you. Okay, For the record, thank I'll you. Get Councillor Jackson, Councillor Marula. Moved and seconded to allow 
if you'll answer the question. Thank you. Certainly, we'd be happy to. And the question again, please. Okay, uh, so I read the report, and, and I understand, Councillor Veller. Thank you. I, I understand what you're asking for, some, some relief to help out uh, for the future, but it says the, the $48,000 that you're asking from us, is that the total debt that you're in? No, is it is more not. debt? And you're seeking financial support from various sources, so have you had any success in doing that? We have had success in as much as our own members have come forward with money to help support the organization. We've had some, uh, some considerable donations uh, from public persons who have decided to support the, the Follies. And um, we have had companies who have decided to forgive some of our debt uh, in, in return for tax receipts because we are a registered charity and we are able to do that. Um, we have also applied to our, Sophia yes. has the list of uh, the company, or at least the organizations that we have applied to for additional funding. Thus far, many of them, as you might know, take many, many months to come forward with any acceptance of our proposal. So we've heard from only one or two and we have been refused. Okay, so uh, thank you, um, to you, Madam Chair. So what is the total debt? Um, as of last, I'll say September, August, September time, our debt was around $120,000. Okay. The largest portion was owed to HECFI, approximately 48000 Okay, and... When our application was made to the city in September, um, we still owed all of that money. Now, we have paid off $25,000 with our Christmas show and those donations that I've mentioned. So we're very proud of ourselves for having done that. <laughs> okay, I, I thank you very much. So I just want to make sure um, we're going on the same wave uh, line of everything will be, this will be a big breakthrough for you, but um, as you see going forward, you can see yourselves getting better and not getting into a worse situation? I believe we can be very successful once again in the city of Hamilton. We had tremendous response from the city for our four Christmas shows that we did. Uh, for the first time in many years, we were sold out on our Thursday afternoon show, and the other three shows we did were all running at approximately 82 to 85 percent of the house sales. That's at McIntyre. Um, which is a smaller venue, as you know, than, than Hamilton Place. But I would like to think that with the changes that we've made um, in our new uh, musical director uh, and the shows that we're going to produce, we already have our dates, times, places, and names for the show for June. Hope to see you all there. And also uh, for our next Christmas show. So we definitely are planning ahead. We have contracted to do a show in, uh, two shows actually, in Brockville next December. We're also going to be playing Stage West in May. So we're not sitting back doing nothing. Now I, I really want you to know that as an organization, those of us on the board of directors have become a management team and we have turned this organization around. One of the ways we've done that is by having home-based offices of all descriptions. I have become an expert in one season on box office and trust me, if somebody phones you and says, I want the same seat I had last year, I probably can give it to you this time. So. Um, my point is that we are making tremendous strides. I can tell you that we still owe a great deal of money. But Merlene Millette is our treasurer. She has put together a, a budget for 2013, which includes debt retirement. So hopefully, I don't think we can do this. I'm, I must be frank. We can't do this forever on our own. We have cut our offices. We don't have an office. We don't have telephone. We don't have websites. We don't have, we have a telephone, but it's called a virtual phone. And it rings in any one of the board of directors numbers if, if I go to the computer and tell it to do that. So there's a, a $300 a month bill that we've eliminated. My own home phone has become the system for long distance calls. I have a plan, which cost me $29 a month. I've called all of our, you know, where's Hal Faker in the last eight, uh, six months. Um, 
I can't tell you how hard we've worked, and not that you probably don't care as long as we can pay back our debts. And with your help, we will be able to move forward in a tremendous way. Okay, and I thank you for that. And just because we have a live audience here that we're on, on, on the air, um, just for the people at home, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to make sure uh, without this kind of relief, you would basically have to dissolve. Is that, is that correct? Oh boy, that's a good question. I, I don't want to say yes. I really don't want to say yes. Um, as long as those of us that are there currently have the energy, uh, and Merlene will tell you we're getting older by the minute, um, as long as we have the energy to keep up this level of work, we can probably move forward without your help. But I'm not think, I don't think that we can do this on our own. I know we can't do it on our own. So where else we're going to get money, I have no clue. Okay. Okay, you want I'll me to say it. yes? All right, I guess I'm going to stand here and say yes. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Councillor Whitehead, questions? Yeah, and I certainly appreciate you coming forward. I, uh, you just indicated that 28000 <laughs> or 25000 was paid to HECFI. Does that mean that the, that the $48,000 uh, bill is actually less than that, minus 25? No. So that's... No, we, we owed about 120. We've paid off um, about us 25,000. Okay. So we'll still have about 25,000 to pay back to other organizations and, and, you know, plus some dollars. But I want you to know that the shows that we've just done, we've completely paid for. We completely paid...